you keep it moving only way to see improvement because patience is a virtue don't skip the lessons for you this ain't a race stay your pace robots coming for you don't crash what up y'all welcome to the blazing the trail podcast i am your host tut kyle h aka mr k1 so this podcast is all about giving the listeners the perfect mindset and the perfect tools to having a toolkit so they can start being down a new path. This week's episode, we got a great friend, extraordinary guest who was blazing the trail in his own way. We're going to talk about his thought processes when he started. He will then give us a heads up for what came for him. And if this is the path that you want to start on, please take heed to what he is about to say. So this guy is a father, a musician, an entrepreneur at the heart, the owner of Small City Big Dreams label. Small City, Small City, <laughs> hey. This man is a veteran. Salute to the man. The funniest troll on the internet. That's for sure. A brother of mine, a person who really goes out to do whatever it takes to get people involved. That's what I really love about him. And he helps people get started on their path. So it was only right that we welcome Kenny Buford to the podcast. Everybody make some noise for Kenny. Right. Woo! Kenny Bars, aka Kenny Too Many, aka Two Bars. Two Bars Shakur, man. My What's brother. happening? You know? Hell yeah. Shout out to Tut, man. Yato. Hell know? yeah. King T. Kenny, let's get this out of the way. How did we really meet? I know it was that color. Yeah. Who did you really hang out with? Bro? So it was, it would have been sixth grade, because that's when I got to color. I was at first, I was going to um Irving, I got kicked out of Irving. Yeah, I remember Hook <laughs> told me about that. Yeah, I got kicked out of Irving. Uh, that's a whole different story. Yeah. I didn't really get kicked out. My mom pulled me out because I got in trouble. Uh, uh-uh, your friends ain't. Mm-mm. Yeah, yeah. Shout out to Chris Topher. <laughs> Hell yeah. But no, um, it would have been sixth grade. Um, what was that like? Oh five, oh six. Yep. Oh five, oh six. Because I came, uh, two thousand five to Lincoln. Yeah. And that was a sixth grade year. Yeah. So I was. That, so I really kicked it with Put. Yeah. Wherever it was crazy because at that time wherever Put wherever I would move, Put's family would like literally <laughs> move to the exact same part of the city. It was almost like they were following us on exactly. purpose. Exactly. Like I remember I moved to the from the south side to the north, and he was that's where I met him. And then I moved back to the south. He moved over south, and I came back over north. And here his family came, so it was like yeah. crazy. <laughs> so I was kicking it with Put. I was kicking it with Hope. Yeah, Hope. Was, yeah. <laughs> Shout out Hope, man. Shout I haven't seen him forever. <laughs> right, I was kicking it with uh, Adrian. Mm-hmm. A-Man, you remember A-Man? Wait. Oh, yeah. big. Then he A- moved to uh, out east? Yeah, uh, North, North Carolina. Carolina. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah, yeah. Adrian Shout out Adrian Andrews. Andrews. <laughs> man, who else did I kick it with? But that was really it, because Hope's family literally like lived across. I used, I used to stay over like, on X Street. Oh, over he there stayed, by Peter Pan? Yeah, right there. And he stayed on the, like right next to Peter stayed Pan. Still in that yellow house, yeah. Right there, to this day. <laughs> but yeah, that, that was my, <laughs> those were my folks, man. And that's who I was kicking it with. And then, so yeah. what year did you leave Color? Bro, I left the beginning of seventh grade. This is like when Mike Jones had first came out. Remember? <laughs> who? Yeah, that was in that back then they did Woman. <laughs> That's when I left and I moved to Omaha. That would have been like the beginning of seventh grade. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, everybody kind of grew up and took off. And I kind of bounced, man. I was the young desperado out yeah, here. Yeah, bro. Moving every other year, man. So yeah, that's kind of how so that happened. When you first left, actually, let's start at the origin, at the genesis. Where were you born? So I was born in Columbia, South Carolina. Mm-hmm. Um, so my, my mom and dad are both from New York. My dad's from Brooklyn. Yeah. And my mom's from the south side of Jamaica, Queens. Oh, snap. Um, my dad was in the Army, and, you know, I was born, you know. On in the base? So- or no? Yeah, yeah, I was born okay. on the base. I was born in South Carolina, so, I mean, I guess essentially my people are from New York. Oh, snap. Uh, and, you know, um, once they split, it would have been like 99 98, 99, and then, you know, we were moving out west. We were about to actually, we were supposed to be moving to California. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we were supposed to be moving to Cali. Never my, changed the game. Yeah, my aunt was uh, out there in the Navy or whatever, and she wanted us to come out, and I actually had a, a, a godmother. Funny story, my godmother is Hakeem's aunt. <laughs> oh, snap. Yeah, so. On the mom's side or on the dad's side? Uh, So his dad 
his James? dad's brother. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. His dad's brother's married to my godmother. Okay, that makes sense. So oh, like, snap. yeah, our families are like know each other from like way, way, way back. In the Damn. Day. Yeah. So I ended up, she ended up convincing my mom to move here, and I was like in Florida, staying with my aunt at the time. And she would just come to me like, yeah, your mom went to Nebraska. I'm like, Nebraska? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? What? This is like 99, like 2000. Uh-huh. And um, yeah, she was like, yeah, come, uh, she, yeah, you're going to Nebraska. I'm like, all right. I yeah. pull up. Mind you, I'm South Carolina. Ain't yeah. really that much snow. And yep. you know what I'm saying? And Big changes. I pull up and, you know, a lot of white people. Yeah. <laughs> Bro, that's how it was because I came from Tennessee. Yeah. But it was a smaller place, like 30,000 people. Yeah. But, like, damn, hella white people. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So I was kind of thrown off, but continue. Sorry, guys, the camera kind of like blinked out. But Kenny was talking about how in Nebraska, there's a lot of white people coming from where he was just at. Bro, I was just at, you know, so it was a culture shock for me. You know, I'm from the. I mean, you can't really say Columbia is, like, a bigger city than here. Fact. You know what I'm saying? But it's not, like, New York City or mm-hmm. L.A. So it wasn't, like, a... I guess it was a, a downgrade. You know, I'm coming from phenomenal weather, palm trees. Yeah. Good food. Phenomenal. Everybody got a, a accent. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? To here. So it was a culture shock for me. It was different. Yeah. Seeing snow for the first time, all that. And that's kind of how that started. That's how I ended yeah. up here. Okay. So when you went to high school... You went to Bell East? So I actually, uh, I started off at Omaha Northwest. Mm -hmm. So my freshman year was at Omaha Northwest, and I did a good chunk of my high school at uh, Bellevue East. Okay. So I was there for about, you know, a few years, but then I started running the streets and, 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 you know, taking the wrong path. And, you know, I eventually uh, got my head on straight, and I came back to Lincoln, and I uh, enrolled myself into Lincoln High, and I graduated from Lincoln High. Hell yeah. yeah. That's just crazy, because I remember seeing you one time, and I was like, what the f- I haven't seen this dude in forever. Yeah. And then you ended up going to, did you play, what kind of sports did you play in high school? <sighs> Man, so, all right, my high school was a little bit, it was kind of a lot of uh, politics. I, I don't know if it was like that in Northeast. I know yeah, y'all were balling booster, at Northeast. Yeah. It was different, though. But like, but the, it was still kind of like politics, because like, oh, this parent is actually putting bread up. Exactly, yeah. so we have to get our kids some playing time. Oh, my goodness, what? Let me tell you about <laughs> Bellevue East, dog. Yo, if yo, like, th- these are like generational families that are oh, going to these high schools. So it's sense. like, it's like, yo, his brother, his his older brother, and his dad both play here, so he's definitely Definitely on the team. Oh yeah. Oh, 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 you know what I'm saying? Or, or yeah, this parent just put up thirty thousand dollars, and we all got Nike uniforms and team shoes. So he's Whoa. definitely on the team. It was like a lot of that, like. But I was also like smaller in high school too. You know okay, what I'm saying? Yeah. So like, I ain't gonna hold it. Like I was nicer than a lot of cats, mm-hmm. but you know, if another dude is six two, six three, yeah. and you got me at uh, five eight strong, you know what I'm saying? Strong at five eight, one twenty five. Soaking wet, you know what I'm saying? Oh, I didn't understand man. it then, but I played basketball, I played football, but where I really excelled was theater and uh, speech and debate. I was I was an actor, so that's Heck why, yeah. you know. Um, it I, makes sense. I led uh, one acts my sophomore year in uh, high school. I was uh, we we traveled, we came down to North Star, we went out to Kearney, and and uh, you know we were building up the stage plays and mm-hmm. things like that. But they failed me out of theater because I didn't want to do the musical. It was Sue's School the musical. I didn't want to do it. I wanted yeah. to play basketball. Yeah, you know that what I'm saying. Sense. So I wasn't getting my thespian hours to like you know you got to become a thespian. You have to put in so many hours. And yeah, I never became a thespian, but. I wanted to play ball. Exactly. I, you know what I'm saying? That literally high school musical. It was literally that. It was literally <laughs> that. But like the theater, the theater uh coach, I guess you'd call him a coach, theater teacher mm-hmm. was like adamant against basketball. Like oh, he, oh. he didn't understand that, like, yo, it's I'm important. a brother and oh, I yeah. play ball. <laughs> yeah. He's like, No, you could be such more phenomenal actor if you just <laughs> And he would talk to me like that, Kenny, you'd be such more of a phenomenal actor if you just if you just put your heart into it. And I'm like, bro, like, I'm literally put the team on the back. Like, I'm, <laughs> yeah. I'm sophomore balling, bro. Like, I'm literally leading the way. Yeah. And I was, uh, like, the head the head character. My character was a scientist in this play. It was called A, a Most Curious Phenomenon. I still have the, the book. Damn. Um, but Smart. 
He uh yeah he he hated on me he failed me so that's when I was like all right I'm not coming back to theater yeah sorry. and that's when I went and I started doing speech and debate where it was more it was still acting but um because I did humorous interpretation it was more like a stand up comedy I like that yeah but I was like snapping into different characters and things oh just like, like that. improvisation pretty basically, much basically yeah because when you bro improv is so important not even just in acting but just like just the totality of life absolutely if you if you can actually like put yourself in a position and then have the ability to adapt and feel the audience or whatever. Yeah. I think it can really propel you to other places in your life. Yeah, absolutely, man. So that was like, actually, that was probably what I was best at. I probably could have went to college for it, but like I said, I started uh, doing stupid stuff, just yeah. started getting into the streets and started... The, yeah. Yeah, you know Because you saying? want the homies... Uh, you want the homies' validation. Well, it wasn't even that. Mm -hmm. I didn't have somebody at home putting a foot in my ass. That was really oh. what that was. It was like... Uh, you know, I was, I thought I was grown and I wasn't grown. You mm. know what I mean? I don't know. If you, I keep turning away. I, I, you know, I thought I was grown and I wasn't grown. You know, I was, I was really good at, uh, uh, speech and debate. My 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 coach was phenomenal. You know that we used to go to uh, UNL. We used to go to the. I have medals and and I have placards oh, and of different dope, things that man. I did, man. And yeah, it was really cool. I wish I would have done anything because. When I was in grade school, fourth grade, we did some sort of play, and I was like, bro, it made me feel like like fulfilled in that moment. Yeah. But I started going towards sports, and I think I just kind of like pigeonholed myself like you're only athletic. And sorry. If you guys don't want to experience that again, I'm helping to save up for a camera. If you guys would like to donate, <laughs> donate to Blazing the Trail podcast so we don't have to go through that again. But you know what? You got to start at something. Oh, I feel that, man, you know. Okay. So let's uh let's pivot a little bit. All right. So when was the first time that you actually were like inspired to start writing? What was like who was your favorite artist back in the day? Mine was 50 Cent. Oh yeah. 50 Cent in the sense of fashion. Okay. But then when it came to like writing and stuff, it wasn't until like um who's the guy on uh Nelly's label. It was like the St. Murphy Lee. Murphy Lee. <laughs> oh my God. Murphy Lee. Shaky Tellfeather was the first time that I actually recorded my voice on a cassette. Yeah. And but I never like rapped after that, but it was just so cool. So all right, so I've actually it's crazy and Pluto tell you the same story. I actually as a little kid, man, I used to go take my mama's tapes. And I uh -huh. and, and I used to go put them in a in a in a tape player and I used to play them shits. You remember the headphones with the little metal strip? Oh, and then they had yeah. the little the little things on the side, <laughs> bro. <Bruh, yeah, laughs> straight up nineties. If you ain't if you're a two thousands kid, I don't baby. think you know what it is. Yeah. <laughs> but I used to take her life after death tape, mm -hmm. the big tape, and I used to bump that. I used to bump Tupac and like Tupac. Wow. Uh, uh, Put will tell you, bro. From third grade on, I knew every single Tupac lyric word for word. And this is before you could pull up a phone and play it. Whoa. And they'd be like, yo. Rap this song, bro. I'd be able to literally Easy. rap that song right there for you oh on the spot. My God. All the lyrics, everything. But anyway, I actually started writing, writing. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, as a kid, you always, like, used to rap. I used to mess around with yeah, the rap. Yeah, playing around. But, like, actually, like, writing, it was after I had got cut from the basketball team my uh, sophomore year. And I was pissed. Like, of you know course. what I'm saying? And this is like, this is when I realized it was the boosters and all this, and also the fact that I'm 5'8. Yep. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I ain't gonna hold you. It was also the fact that I'm 5'8. You know, a little nick, a little dude. I'm sorry. It's all good. It. You can cuss. A Just little, don't do it too much. Yeah, yeah. A little dude. I didn't even say it. I didn't say completely the word. <laughs> he um, caught himself. But I was, you know, I, I was just like, man, you know what? I'm gonna actually try to rap for real. And mm -hmm. I think this is like around. 2008, 2009. This is when uh, Wiz had first came out. Uh, this is like, what was that? He came out with that freestyle. What was that first freestyle? He was uh, uh, no, ATL no. freestyle. And I think he had the red hat on. Yeah. And I was like, man, that's hard. And then... Uh, this is high school? This is in high school. Yeah, because I, I remember getting to Wiz, not until like my senior. Say though. yeah, what? Yeah. And say yeah. And say yeah. yeah. This is before Black and Yellow. This is when he's like, like Prince actually, of the City and the yeah. Prince of the Oh my This is God. when he's actually hungry. And yeah. I, man, shout out to Wiz, but bro, you was. Wiz changed Yo, the nigga you life. really, hey, 10 million, <laughs> I mean, millions of dollars change. I ain't gonna lie to you. Yeah. But anyway, 
it was Wiz, it was J. Cole. This is when Lupe Fiasco was really Ooh. on fire. Before Lasers dropped. You oh know what I'm saying? Oh my gosh, hell. I yeah. was going in, this is the mixtape era, so I'm going on to live mixtapes. I'm going yeah. on to that <laughs> piff. I'm downloading all mixtapes. We had LimeWire Lime popping. LimeWire, oh yo, my god. Yo, Jack and everything, right? And Give I me literally all that. yo, I still got these notebooks. All that was trash. <laughs> <laughs> It was trash. Oh, my goodness. Like, when people be like, oh, man, I still got that mixtape from 2009. I'm like, bro, throw that away. Like, <laughs> please throw it away. It's not the same. It ain't me. That was one of my questions. Like, what is something that you listen to and you're like, bro, I should have never put that shit out? Not never put it out, but it's just like you cringe listening so to it. So I cringe listening to my very first song. It was like her favorite song is what I call I was singing on the thing. It was like when everybody was still doing like a lot of that auto-tune yeah. rap, futuristic stuff. And it was, uh, I had the tag and the beat. I thought I was a baller because I had got 100 plays in a day. I'm like, oh, man, I'm on. Like, I'm up. MySpace. I was, <laughs> oh, MySpace. Yo, I'm up, dog. What's <laughs> Yo, put this on your playlist, dog. Oh, my God. Yo, that was trash. <laughs> that was trash, man. Look, I'll never forget it. That that was, like, one of the oh things I cringe God. at. My very, very first mixtape, it was, like, called Composition Ambitions. That's a good name. I, I, I cringe at that, too. It was my first... Re- the the mixtape cover had nothing to do with anything. It was a... <laughs> <laughs> Hey, hey, it was a cityscape of a city that wasn't my city. <laughs> it was a cityscape, and it said, Composition Ambitions, I Kill Bars. And, like, in my mind, now that I look at it, I'm like, bro, what does this got to do with anything that you're doing? <laughs> it was really trash. It was trash, for real. But oh, uh, there's a couple of joints on there that are actually rocking a little bit. But, mm-hmm. yeah, that was that was one of the things that, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, whenever I look at it, even thinking about oh it, I'm just like, God, bro. You got me fucking darn. Bro. <laughs> yeah, it was facts, trash. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, we're just going to stay on the music. I was going right. to ask you about your military career, but we'll bounce back to okay, that. Okay, okay. So, was what was the reasoning that you felt like it was necessary to create your own label of Small City Big Dreams? So small city essentially was already a thing, you know. Mm-hmm. It was it was me, Trap, and my boy Austin. But we shout were always out. yeah, shout out to them. But it, we were um, all homies, man. We all made music together. Mm-hmm. We were kicking it. Austin, he he was like the more of the trouble one. He was always like locked up and stuff, yeah. so he couldn't really like he was uh, trying to pursue it. But like the system was always keeping him in yeah, trouble. Yeah, that makes sense. You know what I mean? But me and me and uh, D Trap, man, that was like my best friend mm-hmm. and. And we uh we just did everything together. And essentially, I came up with the name. It was about like 2015, mm-hmm. and that's kind of like where that where that came about. And I was just like, man, I want my own team. You know, I want to I want to create something. And I was like, yo, what would make sense? I don't want to be like the the West Side Thuggers or yeah, something. Or something. Like, yeah, something I want something yeah. marketable, and I want something that represents where I'm from. And Facts. you know, this is a small city, bro. That's so smart. Cause I always, every time I like went to a show, I would always see. Whether it be you and Trap or it be all three of y'all. And I'm like, oh, shit, they're always rolling together. Because at first, I thought D was just like, he was just supporting almost every show. I would see him at almost every show that I'm going. I'm like, who is this cat? And then and then I saw the, uh, you guys together. And I'm like, oh, shit, they might have a thing together. Right. And once I saw the logo with the, is it a sun? It's, it's, yeah, it's or like just a, the design. Yeah, it's a design, yeah, it's an, essentially. But I mean, you could look at it like that. Um, did it start? Did you want it to have like uh, an acronym or did you want it to just say small city? Uh, I wanted it to do both. Yeah. I wanted to have the, you know, essentially it's like the Nintendo situation. Oh, like yeah. I wanted to, I wanted to throw, I wanted something to be throwback, be like, yo, man, when you see it, like, dang, that's actually kind of tight. Exactly. Let me throw that on. You know Hell what I'm saying? Yes. But yeah, man, we we were all we all uh, started like rocking with each other like since like oh mm-hmm. nine, you know what I'm saying oh eight oh nine. I met uh, Trap and Homeroom, and he, I was like I rap. He's like oh I rap too. We both were trash, <laughs> and you know this is uh what's the he's like yo man let's have a rap battle. I'm like all right yeah bet let's battle right, <laughs> dog. 
when I tell you we were we were chopping up on the phone, and I think we both wrote this is when that pop bottle song oh, yeah. by Bird, Birdman, Birdman and Lil Wayne, mm -hmm. and we both wrote verses to that, and he, I'm going at him, and he's like trying to go back at me. I won. I, I'm just, of course. <laughs> I Let's won. put that out there. Yeah, I won. <laughs> and he's like, damn, bro, I didn't think he was gonna come at me like that, dog. <laughs> yeah, like, let me do it again. We should be a group, and then we was like, yeah, let's be a group. We were the Swag Kings. That shit was whack. But because like swag was a thing when we were kind of like yeah. high school. Yeah, swag. The Everybody swag kings. swag, bro. With the Z, it better have a Z in it or oh. it didn't count. <laughs> we were the Swag Kings, man, and um, you know it was it. We I, when we grew up, we were like, yo, that's kind of whack. <laughs> like that's kind of whack. Like, bro, anytime that I do something when I'm young and I look back, I'm like, what the fuck were you thinking? Yeah, bro? yeah, facts. but it's good that we did it. Yeah. Okay, so when was the first time you got on stage? I think you're good with dates, so that's why I was like, when was the first time this dude Kenny got like, on stage? Awesome rap stuff. Awesome rap stuff. Because we know that you were a thespian, so okay. you've done that before. So our first show <laughs> was in somebody's living room Whoa. On, on somebody's birthday. It was terrible. But do you think people should start doing that now? Well, like, house shows, yeah, I've actually been to a legit house show. Yeah. But, like, this was, like, just, like, right now, everybody's just, <laughs> <laughs> like, this was literally, like, not, like, legit. We had nothing recorded. Oh my we had God. the beat CD. We, and then this girl, uh, I think Mikey, she was like, yo, yo, I want y'all to perform my birthday party. All right, cool. So we pull up, yo, nervous. Yeah. Yo, y'all about to have y'all, uh, y'all about to have y'all performance in the living room. All right, cool. Yo, throw the oh. BCD in. And we, no stage presence, just literally, just, like, rapping our lyrics. Beat, waiting for the beat. Waiting for our, rapping our lyrics and the beat. And, like, the family was trying to rock with Yeah, us. but they couldn't, huh? <laughs> they were just like, yeah, you you got to be more hyped than that. You got to be more this. And I'm like, yeah. And, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and that I'm was like, terrible, yeah. terrible. <laughs> so, yeah, that would, I guess that would count. But, like, stage-wise, stage-wise, mm -hmm. My very, very, very first show would have been one of those, uh, it was a Scott Lampkin show. It was a King of the City show. Did you ever remember seeing those flyers? King of the City. I'm so not... King of the City was like a thing that Scott Lampkins would, uh, he would host. And basically, uh, no, here. Oh. He was like, I was working at the mall at Solaris mm -hmm. selling phone cases. Yeah. And that's really where a lot of this started kicking off for mm -hmm. me. And um, I saw this flyer and he was like, yo, at the bottom it says like, no, it was like, uh, King of the City Showcase, show who's, like, the greatest in the city. You know, Facts, like, one you know? of those, like, it's it, when you're a thirsty up-and-coming artist, you're like, yeah, I yeah. got to prove my bars is the tightest, of right? So I jumped on the opportunity. I texted him, like, yo, man, I want a show slot. And the only thing this man cared about is ticket sales. So he's like, yo, can you sell some tickets? I'm like, I ain't never sold no tickets, yeah, but, but I, I guess we're going to learn, yeah. right? No, no, I'm lying. I'm lying. No, no, no. Scratch that. Scratch that. It's My okay. first show was an Afton show. Have you heard of those people? A what? Afton, Afton shows. I have not. Bro, it's like some janky promoter stuff. It's like uh, you go online to Afton shows, and basically they do a showcase like all around the country, right? And wow. like uh, no legit promoter. You basically uh, you submit yourself. And they put, they make you look like you're the headliner. It'll be like, yo, Avton <laughs> Shows presents I Kill Bars. And then under it will be like eight other people. But on their flyer, it says their name is the headliner. Okay. And in order to get the prime slot, you got to sell X amount of tickets. Oh, so that was snap. like one of my first, okay, that was one of my first shows. And when I did this show, mm -hmm. I saw it was like you printed off the tickets offline on the printer. And they were regular paper. Wow. <laughs> and, dog, my first performance I'm performing, dog, and the the cord falls out of the mic. <laughs> <laughs> so embarrassing. Yo, very embarrassing, dog. I'm like, I don't want it. Nah, nah, nah. And then, bloop, uh, and I'm looking down. I'm like, and this before, and I don't have the song recorded, so it's before the verse picks back up. I'm like, snap. I oh, snatched the cord, shit. put it back in, and start performing. That was like my first, yeah. That's so. Yeah. Damn. So with the stage presence and you you know how to rock with the people, how do you feel now versus how you felt when you were on the stage? Oh, man. Like now it's like the, the greatest feeling in the world. Um, it, it started to become like at the time when I was learning, you know, these are all things that ended up sharpening me and making me mm -hmm. better. You know, I learned how to hold the mic the right way. I learned yes. how to hold the cord if I have a corded mic. Exactly. I learned how to control the crowd. I learned, yo, I can't be rapping over just playing instrumental. You know yep. what I'm saying? I got to have a show that. track. Right. And, it, and it's all right. It's all right. You know, I learned, you learn those different things. It, it takes you becoming, 
you know, you got to get over that hump before you actually become who you were destined to become. You Hallelujah. Know what I mean? Praise that, man. That's, that's some good advice, man. Yeah, facts, man. Okay, so what has been your favorite show so far? How many shows do you, can you think about how many shows you've performed? Okay, so I'll give you one here and then one out of town. Okay. So my favorite show here was, it'll probably have been my We Are Small, no, nah, no. Nah. We Are Small City was one of my favorites, but I lost my voice. That, Like I said, it was, oh, snap. bro, I, it was my first show I've ever put together and we sold it out. And to capacity. Like they would not let anyone in. And your voice was shot. I I my my uh my uh my host, mm -hmm. the person who's gonna host the show, did not show up. So he's like, Oh dog, my car just broke down, whoa, whoa, whoa. And I'm like, yo. <laughs> you can't do that, right? <laughs> I'm now. like, I can't, you know what I'm saying? I can't have nobody and then I talk to nobody. Yeah. And I'm up here, you know, I brought the homies up on stage and I was so hyped for everybody else because it was so deep. It yeah. was elbow to elbow. Everybody's <laughs> in there. Everybody's jumping, dog, and like literally my show it's my turn and my voice is gone. Damn. That's another learning moment. But but anyway, outside of that one, I would say my, my Barsky out the great show. That was another the Barsky. Oh shit, yeah, hell yeah. That was, you were at that one? Yes, yeah, bro. Yeah, that was a packed that was a packed house as well. Uh that was my first real time I got to actually rock rock the stage for real. Yeah. And then out of town, it probably had been um Tulsa, Tulsa, Oklahoma. Oklahoma. I love Tulsa. We know Tulsa. your ass is an Oklahoma fan. No, no, I'm not. <laughs> no, I'm not. No. No, I love Tulsa, man. Let me tell you, Tulsa is like, it's like Omaha, but a lot more like I don't want to say country, as in like a more rural. No, no, no. I don't want to say country, as in like a derogatory. Like everybody down there is like family. Like, oh hell yeah! Like when more I was down community. there, bro. Like shout out to my boy Steph Simon, bro. Brought us out, and it was literally my first show out after getting out of the army. Mm -hmm. And it was my first out of town show, and dog, it was everything was phenomenal. He threw something called the World Culture and Music Festival. He had oh, two yeah. headliners. I remember you uh, promoting that. Dog, one of the headliners was Larry June. I got, I missed him by like a day. Damn. And um, literally, it was like so. I performed, and like everybody was like showing love. Everybody was buying my CD, bro. I went down there with like fifteen dollars in my pocket. What? Dog left. Out that piece with 300 bones in my pocket. Feeling great. No CDs left. Like, I was literally, like, on cloud nine. So that was probably, like, my best. That was probably what pushed you forward to continue doing that. Oh, my goodness. Man, so when you first started making music, like, how was your recording process? Did you do it? Did you go to somebody? Who was your, like, engineer? Were you paying out the ass for Man. studio time? So, look, we went to this dude named uh, Dylan, mm -hmm. and dog, we used to, like, mind you, he was doing a lot of work for us for, like, 20 bucks. Like, you know, I would throw him 20. 20 an hour? Or he just... It was almost, like, 20 for a session, essentially. Oh, but, bro, 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 we barely got anywhere, dog. Like, we'd be up in here. I, You know, I paid him already or whatever. We'll go in there, do one take, two takes of the verse, and he's like, all right, cool. I'm about to go smoke a cigarette. And literally, it'd be like... 10 or 20 minutes of different cigarette oh breaks. Oh, my bro. God. Yeah, so I'd be like, oh, he'd be like, yeah, bro, that's tight. <laughs> He's like, yeah, you lay the verse. All right, cool. I'm about to go smoke a cigarette. You're like, yeah, bro, wait. what? You're stopping the creative. Yeah, Lord. yeah, bro. Like, what are you talking? Uh, you're about to go smoke a cigarette. Oh. No. <laughs> yeah, but that was like the first few songs I had recorded. That was like uh, the Say Something remix. That was uh, that was the All The Way Turned Up remix. And run. Say something, Drake. Yeah, say something, Drake. Oh shit! Uh, all the way turned up, Roscoe. All the oh, way Roscoe. turned up, Roscoe <laughs> Dash, and uh, <laughs> and uh, run this town. Oh snap! I I would actually like to rap over Run This Town. That should be dope. Yeah, man. But when Wayne killed it, it was like there's nothing you could do. Yeah. <laughs> there's nothing. <laughs> Wayne bodied that. Yeah. Wayne, literally, everybody remembers No Ceilings ran like our high school. Bro, like I remember the first time it was my, at my first job. My First day at McDonald's. Yeah, they're like, "Have you heard the No Ceilings mixtape, bro?" From that day on, I I didn't stop listening to it for a month because everybody around knew all the lyrics already. So I was like <laughs> motivated, like I'm trying to sing this with everybody. Yeah, man, he was snapping on that whole, and it, I was disappointed with No Ceilings too. No, I didn't even want to hear it because I there was so much energy put into No Ceilings that I put in. Yeah, man, and now I'm like. 
I don't know if I want to listen to it. Yeah, man. It was like Wayne was on a tear for like, you know, from 06 <laughs> to like 11, 2011, yeah. bro. He was on a tear. It was like once he went to jail, that kind of stopped his yep. little momentum he had. But he literally was was bro, was that swag, dude. Sir, seven foot. Um, I had a young cat tell me he sucked, by the way. I'm like, bro, you... What? Yeah, bro. I was I was like, I can't I gotta stop talking to you, bro. You lost credibility. Yeah, bro. I was like, Lil Wayne? <laughs> like, do you not Who remember? paved the way for a lot of these artists? Yeah, he's like, Yeah, I don't even talk about it. I'm getting mad about it. <laughs> Let's switch the subject. <laughs> All right. So how did you meet one of my favorite engineers, Drake Sobrehard? I don't know how to Mr. Sobrand. Audio 17. Sobrand. All right, so I'm at Drake. We miss you, Drake. Yeah, we miss you, man. Even though you don't respond to my messages. He bro. don't respond to my messages. <laughs> Damn, Drake. Hey, okay. I think he don't like us no more, but it's all right. <laughs> so we still love you, Drake. Yeah. Um, I think it was through Chris and Cameron and yep. uh, Drew, mm -hmm. all of them. I can't remember which one. It was one of them. I think it was Cameron. Yeah, because Cam, they, uh, what's his name said? Uh, Drew said Cam lit the way for most of us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was Cam. It was definitely Cam then because I remember he was like, yeah, bro, just go to Audio 17. Mm -hmm. um, and this is when um, I think I also started going over there because, you know, I love TJ to death. That's my guy, you know, yep. but he was just costing too much. <laughs> like, you 16 know what I'm saying? hour. Yeah, before it used to be 40, though, you know, so Ooh, like I was swinging. Nice. Yeah, I mean, even then I was a little bit, you yeah. know what I mean? But when I'm I'm fresh and hungry into the game, and then even before him, I was I was working with Future D. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, I, and then I, that was also around the time I was beefing with KD. So, We're going to talk about that. Oh, yeah? yeah <laughs> that was around the time I was that. beefing with KD. And um, obviously I couldn't go to that studio because that's the studio he was recording at. Oh, so, like, wait. The... Wait, the the um the track that you recorded when you had your shirt off, was that Audio 17? Yeah. <laughs> that boy was hot. He was so mad when he was. Man, I got a I got shit. a crazy backstory about that one. Yeah, let's hear it, man. I think it was a great time to all right, so, transition to that. All right. So basically how how am I starting? How am I starting the story? So like KD was was he saying like he was the hottest in the in the city and nobody was kind of like responding? Oh. There wasn't nothing from Screwface. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. Okay, from okay. I remember, I remember all, now. All the all the, all the bigs. The big dogs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So basically, how I looked at it was like this: I was in NTC, that's the National Training Center, that's in California. Like mm -hmm. they usually send all soldiers and all that, that yeah. out there to train because you're basically trying to show the Pentagon or whoever that your unit is deployable, like okay. that you're ready to go to war. Yeah. Right. So we're out there. It's hot as hell. Huh. Bro, it was like 117 degrees in the shade. I'm out here sweating. I was pressed. <laughs> I oh, was I'd pressed. Be fucking pissed. But this is when he's like getting that screw. Like, oh yeah, this is, he was going crazy. Yo, bro. this is like this is uh, like a day after he had dropped the rapture. I'm watching. Yeah. I'm reading the comments. Everybody's like, oh, he bodied him. Woo, 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 woo. Mm -hmm. I couldn't really watch it until I got back to the tent. Yeah, with the wife. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got back in there and I'm watching it and I'm just. Like, mm. <laughs> like I'm like, mm. <laughs> like it was a problem. Man. I'm like, yo, but I'm looking, bro, and nobody Nothing. got no answers for mm -hmm. dude. Like, and he's cold. Like, yeah. don't get it wrong. And I actually shot the KD. I was just talking to him earlier. Me and him are really good friends. Now. I see that now. Yeah, we're re real, real tight. I'll be. I was talking to him. We. I was at the gym running uh, on the treadmill at six thirty, and we we're on the phone chopping it up. But, uh, for me, the way I viewed it was, you know, I knew KD. And I don't know if anybody knew this. I knew KD from my freshman year of high school when I told you I went to Omaha Northwest. Oh, okay. Yeah. And um, and he was rapping then. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? He was still a big dude then, but he didn't even. We had gym class together. He, mm -hmm. I, I did weights class. Didn't help. And I, <laughs> <laughs> I, and he was like in team sports. Yeah. But like we didn't have like a crazy gym setup. So like when I come out the when we come out the locker room, you see him. He ain't never dressed out for gym. He's yeah, chilling, course, rapping. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then me, we got to go to the weight room. So then we go to the weight room, but he's always rapping and stuff. I wasn't rapping yet, you mm -hmm. know. And um, so essentially, I'm like, yo, like, you know, he's I'm the king of this, I'm this, and I'm that. Ain't nobody about to do this, blah, oh, blah, shit. blah. You know, talking that yeah, energy. Yeah. And I'm like, bro, somebody do something. <laughs> like, you know, so like somebody. Somebody put the fire out. Somebody say man. something, mind you. And this is, and, and you know, shout out to him. Uh, me and him ain't really cool like that, but. This was when Screw was that dude here. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Facts. And I'm not, Shout I'm not, Screw, I'm man, man enough. I'm man enough to to say that because mm -hmm. that was what it was. It was the yeah. facts. And he's still successful to this day. I don't know what he's doing, but yeah, you know. Yeah, he's going crazy on YouTube. Yeah, bro. yeah. He's still successful to this day. You know, shout out to that black man doing yeah. his thing. But uh, 
Dude, you would never touch a bourbon stage with unless Screw was hitting that first. Facts. That's facts. Like he was, he was the dude who they were putting on to open up for whomever. Exactly. And no other local would touch that stage Nothing. because they did not rock with none of us, bro. Mm. And, and and honestly, you got to give a part of that that uh, a piece of that homage to. There's a few people involved, but KD Casey, is one of them. Yep. Casey is Casey is a big like ninety nine. Point five percent, but that other point five mm-hmm. was KD. Real shit. The other point five was KD, and I'm and, and I'm getting ready to break it on down. So this may get me yelled oh, at, cussed shit. at, whatever. But this is what it was, and this was my perception, mind you. So I'm looking at it as, yo, somebody do something, right? Mm-hmm. I went and I spoke with all of the homies. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna put put their names out yeah. there individually because I don't want nobody feeling like I'm trying to <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to blast them. And this is old, so don't get this is old. Yeah. So this is what happened though. Mm-hmm. Bro, I hit up all the homies. And you know who all the homies is. I hit up all of them. Oh, shit. Nobody wanted to say nothing. No, I'm good, bro. Yeah, everybody was like, nah, I'm straight. We're going to ignore him. I'm like, no, y'all ain't. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? I'm like, bro, somebody needs to say something, bro. He's not even from here. Yeah, challenge. I know I'm not real. I wasn't born here, but but I was raised raised up here since since second grade. Mm -hmm. So, like... To me, I'm from here. You know, mm-hmm. and when people ask me where I'm from, this is I grew up here. I ran exactly. these streets like everybody else. Mm-hmm. But, bro, like nobody wanted to say nothing, and I'm like, bro, like, all right. I'ma say something. Yeah. Bro, they're like, dog, don't do it. Like, yeah. just leave it alone. Mind you, this is him coming off of the rapture. Yeah. This is him coming off of uh I can't he, un, what's the first one? I can't remember the first I one. I don't I don't remember either, but he was coming with that bravado. Bro, that kind he, of he that was, energy. So that niggas energy. Was scared. Everybody was scared. Yeah, I was like, Who including me. I never I, at hey. this point, I never like wrote any raps yeah. I was only more engineering and stuff like that but right. I was like who the fuck is this dude like he was going in yeah. and like I was like yo somebody has to say something you know especially because y'all can't be scared of him and number two like if you don't say nothing he's gonna continue to bully exactly. y'all he's gonna bully you. like Hell I don't yeah. like bullies yeah I don't like bullies. So, like, to me, I felt like Screw was getting bullied. And he yeah. was. He was getting bullied. He re- he responded to the first one. A couple one, times, yeah. But that second one, there was nothing, there was nothing you could say. Yeah. There's nothing you could say. Bro, like, the music video. Like I said, there's nothing you could say. There's nothing you could do. There's no no fat jokes in the world that you could tell because the his, you know, he was set up. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. His, his, his old people put the drop out on him, which was, you know, it is what that situation is. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, it was kind of unfair. Uh, and you know it was also a preemptive strike. You know, so when you're yeah. hit with a preemptive strike, you don't know how long this person could have been playing. And Facts. You don't know how long. So, and even myself, I always told myself, if I feel like something's a preemptive strike, I'm not going. I'm not going to jump at no, daytime. Exactly. I'm gonna take my time the same way you took your time. Facts. I may not say nothing right there. I might say nothing tomorrow. But you hey, wait. just know that this is on that ass yeah. later. You feel <laughs> what I'm saying? That's Facts. chess right there. That's how you play chess. Exactly. But he got tricked out of his spot. You know what I'm saying? Because he he came back with I'm screw. Mm-hmm. I, I I gotta respond. You know, exactly. this is hip hop, but realistically he got set up. Yep. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And you know, uh the chips fell where they fell. But like, so for me, I was like, yo, y'all gotta say something. They're like, nah, we straight. I was like, okay, cool. I'm gonna say something. Mm-hmm. So we come back from NTC, and I think I'm like a few uh, like a few months. From uh, I think we were getting ready to rotate to go over to, to Korea, mm-hmm. and I'm like, yo, all right, bam, I'm gonna do it. And I told the homies, like, bro, look, you came with a vengeance, bro. I came at him with the first one. It was more of a heat check. It was like a heat check, like, yo, I'm gonna see where he's at with it. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. And I knew, don't don't get it twisted. I knew he was gonna come at me. Yeah, you, you know what I'm saying. He knew who you were, so he was. I knew he was back. coming with it, and he did. And like, so this is the backstory. So I recorded the first one at Drake's. Mm-hmm. You know, we're all, you know, woo, rah, rah, rah. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> My plan was I was going to record, when he dropped his, I was going to record another one that same day and then drop it. Oh. Uh. So mind you, I'm in the studio. It's me and my boy Schrader, mm-hmm. uh, and we posted up in at Drake's. And Drake is like, yo, like, this is vicious. Like, yeah. the first one, yeah, he's like, whoa, you know, Drake, whoa, bro, this is vicious, bro. You know, and like, oh my God. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'm on him, I'm on him, right? <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm puffing my chest out, walking around the studio. Yeah. Dog, I'm in the studio recording. Remember, I told you I was going to drop, because he was like, I'm going to drop this, give me 100 likes, I'm going to end this dude's life. Woo, woo, woo. Oh, shit. Okay. I'm in the studio. <laughs> I'm in the studio just like this, sitting on Drake's couch. Remember his yep, couch that yep, was yep, yep, yep. Uh, on that back corner. Yeah, in the back corner in his mixing room, and I'm sitting there, 
it comes on. <laughs> like, I'm in there, like, he dropped it. I'm like, okay, let's hear it. First off, that labeling that you claim, fit family oh, and your son, just ain't no game. You a vet with good, get your camo stay. I'm like, <laughs> oh, dude, I'm leaning, bro. I started leaning in the seat. <laughs> bro, this is that on, on my on my kids, bro. I'm literally leaning in the seat like this. I, <laughs> bro, I slid out of the chair like I ain't have no soul. Yo, yo. Like for, that marijuana commercial that they show you. This is what happens when you smoke marijuana. Yo, when I tell you I was sick, yeah. I was, mind you, it's I'm in the military. I'm up here during the week. I got to be up at 6 in the morning, mm -hmm. the following morning, but I'm up here. It's three hours to drive here, bro. Oh, I drove up here three hours to try and write that <laughs> or try to record that, and I was not with the same energy that I had. Yeah. So by the time I'm done, mind you, and I'm like at the end of my paycheck, I got like $50 left, so I had to buy the beat, and then I had to buy the session. I had to put some in the tank to get me home. Facts. So I had very little money, and uh, he ethered the, the first yeah. one. He ethered it. Like, it was literally ether. Like, yo, <laughs> yo, and it's like, you know, have you ever seen the movie The Wood? Yes. Yo, remember when he's like. The three homies? Yeah, he's like, yo, this is my fight. And he's like, what'd you, you say? <laughs> and he stole yeah. off on him. Yo, that's how I felt. <laughs> I felt like I was Mike who stole off on him. <laughs> I stole off on him, but then, remember he started getting beat up? Yeah. <laughs> yo, yo, after that happened, I was literally, it was like 10 o'clock when I, like, we finished, and we're, I'm mobbing back to, like, uh, after I heard it, I was like, oh, there's no way I'm, I, I can drop this. Mm -hmm. There's no way this competes with this at all. I was like, yo, I got sick. I'm like, yo, we got to go. Drake's mm -hmm. like, yo, stop. Listen to me. You know, like the like in the <laughs> movies, you when like Mr. Miyagi is trying to pump up Daniel's son yeah. or like the fighter. He's like, yo, you got to You got this, man. You got it. He's like, yo, can he listen? It's all right, bro. You got to do this. You got to you just got to come back. Mm -hmm. And like, I'm literally just sick. Like, I'm like, yo, I started this. <laughs> and now you feel I, you're like, fuck. Yo, hold, hold on, Kenny. We're going to take a small commercial break. Thank you to the sponsor. Please watch this. We'll be right back. So Drake is shaking you. So Drake is like, yo, Kenny, listen, you got this. <laughs> he's like pumping me up. Thank you to the sponsor. He's like, come back. Come back. You got to come back harder than that. It's all right. Woo, woo, woo. And I'm just like, in, in my head, my confidence is shook. Of because, course. Because like... He talked about how many different ways he was going to murder me. He talked about my son. He talked about the military. He talked about whooping my ass on Veterans Day. He talked about... Multifaceted this. Though it was very, 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 very descriptive and it was very well put together. And, you know, we talk about this all... Every time we're on the phone, we talk about it. I be trying to, like, scrape it over, but he's always bringing it up. Nah, yeah. nah. You the only... <laughs> yo, bro. <laughs> yo, blood. Yo, blood. You the only one, blood. <laughs> but, uh... <laughs> That's my dog, man. But like, so I, I'm driving back to I'm driving back to um, Kansas, and my boy Shay's next to me. I'm like, bro, take my phone. I threw my phone at him, and I'm like, yo, hold, write this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, write this, write this right now. I'm yelling at him while I'm driving. Da -da 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 -da. Like I'm on my two bucks. I'm driving. Yeah. Whoa, whoa, whoa. He's like, bro, calm down. I can't. <laughs> He's like, you going too fast. Yo, the note was this long in my phone that I was like yelling at him. Oh, my God. And, like, literally, I got back to Kansas at 2 in the morning. I have to be up in four hours. I'm like, bro, there's no way I'm going to PT. I didn't up. go to PT. I laid in my bed, like, oh, sick. Like, SpongeBob when he had the SIDS. Yeah. Like, I laid in my bed sick. Like, and my sergeant called me because, you know, when you miss, you get in trouble and stuff. He's like, yo, where the fuck is your ass yeah. at? You ain't show up to PT. Did it? I'm like, sorry, I'm sick. He's like, yeah. you bullshit. You, you lying. <laughs> <laughs> yo, he going in on me. Mind you, he going in on me. I got the world against me right now. I was like, maybe I should just jump out this third story window right now. He like, I'm like, no, for real. I don't feel good. He's like, all right, get to work at nine. I'm like, all right, bet. Yo, I called Trap. Yeah. He like, yo. I'm like, dog, man, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do it. He's like, dog, no. He's like, dad, bro, you got to get him, bro. Yeah. He's like, he's like, bro, you got to ride on him, Nick. You got to get greasy. That's the only word I remember, man. Greasy. He's like, you got to get greasy, bro. Get disrespectful, bro. Yeah. Get disrespectful the same way he got disrespectful for you. Yeah. So then me, what I did was, as much as it hurt my soul to do it, mm -hmm. I had to keep replaying it. 
I kept replaying it. Damn. I kept replaying it. And I replayed it. It's a reference point to get back at him. And I replayed it. And I was like, okay, so what makes this this hard? Yeah. Right? So what about it is making it hard? That's the biggest th- question I asked myself. What makes this this hard? I'm like, hmm. Okay, the bars is cool, mm-hmm. but it's really the shock value of what he's saying that really is what's upsetting me. Yeah. And it's the shock value of what he's saying is what is making everybody else go, oh, <laughs> right? Yes. He, I was like, okay, you're talking about my son. Okay, I got to, not not only do I got to ride for myself, I got to ride for my seed, bro. Facts. You just talked about my kid. And that shit hurt. And I think that was the one, that, that was the thing you. that made me go like, all right, I got to kill him. Yep. You know what I'm saying? It was the thing yep. that was like, all right. You know, I already the Kenny South Park thing. I've heard that like since third grade. Yeah, like, you know what I'm saying. So that was brush that shit. The fuck yeah, up. I brushed that off. I wasn't worried about that. I was like, okay. He said he was going. Okay, smash my baby mom. Okay, whatever. He said this, said that, said he brought up the army. Okay, I'm gonna flip the army lines. I'm gonna do this, and then I'm gonna get disrespectful. Ooh, yes. And I went and did some homework on my own. Got some dirt, scraped the dirt up, add the dirt and the disc, and I I turned around and brought back my. You know what I'm saying? His disc was ten minutes long as well. Holy so the fact sh- that the ten fact, minutes long, you never heard it. I- so the fact that his disc was 10 minutes long was like what made me go, okay, I dropped one disc. He essentially responded to that disc with, with his disc, but he had a song. You could tell it was a song that was already pre-done, mm-hmm. and he basically like added, added me yeah. into it. So I was like, okay, that part I can disregard. Yeah. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it 10 minutes as well, but, but it's going to be both discs. Ooh. So then you owe me a diss. <laughs> and I knew at that point with him making it a 10-minute diss that he didn't think I was going to... He wouldn't have nothing else to talk about because, you know, you already spoke about what it you were going to speak yep. about in the first in the first facet. Yep. And so for me, that's when I was like, all right, bam. I did that. I went back up and, like, and, bro, I saw who was who. You know, I saw a lot of fake people. I saw a lot of the people who acted like they are riding with me but mm-hmm. really hopped sides and went to him. Yeah. And then I saw all those people backtrack once I actually responded with Flawless Victory. What a fucking name. Yeah, Flawless Victory. I, I like to, if I ever do, you know, write another diss song, it'll be like a, like a video game name or something like that, you know? <laughs> but shout out to KD, man. We squashed the beef, man. We just did a, a charity event. Uh, for the turbine flat, or no, with the turbine flats. The turbine flats right over there by the bay. Yep, right over there. We did a project with them that we uh we ra- fundraised money for 1867 bar. We did a versus battle. Uh, we talked about you know a lot of different things, and it was real real good for hip hop. Uh, and you know me and him are like solid homies, mm-hmm. man. Like we we chop it up regularly, like all the time. We'll we'll just sit there and just shoot the mm-hmm. shoot the shit and all that, you know. So like when. Let's say you're an artist, you want to get into um, writing music. What are some tips to give them to stay writing instead of just like, all right, I wrote I wrote a song today. What is some tips for a new, like a beginner to stay on the path? Because I see you almost, almost every day if I look at Snap, I see you with your notebook, with the lines written out of whatever you just wrote. Oh, yeah, man. So for me... It's staying hungry, man. Like, I want... You can't want this... Nobody can want this more than you want it for yourself, right? So, for me, it's like... Like, um... Number one, you need to sharp. My girl, she she's always brought this up. Like, yo, if you don't use it, you're gonna lose it, right? Facts. So, if you don't sharpen your sword... Then how can you expect anybody, especially if you're a new artist, if you're mm-hmm. starting, like a lot of your like your first two or three CDs, nobody's gonna listen to it. That's just, just the reality. Take that. Just take, just that take it what it is because take it as what it is because everybody's trying to make music. So like, you know, it's and I was telling my boy this earlier because he was mad that people don't be sharing this stuff. I'm like, bro, it's all in your presentation as well. It is. You know, if Big you're presenting time. your stuff like if you are Oh, I'm dropping a new song today at and I just dropped a new song. Like, bro, there's only probably five artists that are out that are established that could drop one album randomly and J. go Cole, platinum. Drake and a couple others. J. Cole, Drake, Jay Z, Kendrick mm-hmm. Lamar, and Beyonce. Facts. Right. Right. I mean, maybe Taylor Swift, if she wanted to, she probably could. Yeah. Right? I'm not saying she's not a could. fucking doubt. But like those are the people who you know, no matter what they do, if they drop it, it's going for it's going platinum. Facts. And like you know, I was like, "Yo, bro, you can't be up here with with no raggedy cover art either, mm-hmm. right?" Because it's if you look regular, if you move like a simp, and this is a, a conversation I had with Scatterman, who mm-hmm. was signed to Strange Music. Mm-hmm. He's like, "If you move like you regular, people are gonna treat you like you regular." Facts. So you gotta move different. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And that's I don't like I don't feel like I'm above anybody, but I feel like I move different than a lot of people move. And I can you know definitely attest to that you definitely move different than a lot of people. I, I attempt to anyway, but yeah, just stay hungry. 
uh, always pro- progress. If you know, like I said, it's going to be about a good, unless you're just naturally gifted with it, it's going to take about two or three years mm-hmm. for you actually get right. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because how many like throwaways do you think you have? Like CDs? No, no, no. Like songs? Songs. Hundreds. Verses. Hundreds. I have Same. hundreds. I have notebooks, stacks of notebooks at the house. Did you have a problem with perfection at first? Yeah, so it was up until so my first album, Food for Thought, the first one, Diary of a Young Black Man. Mm-hmm. Uh, I did a lot of writing for that one. One Up, Barsky Eye, those are were as well. Like I was like trying to perfect them because like I I got to a point where it's like all right now, now it's like uh, you can't lose your momentum, right? So if you do finally come out with that that one CD, that's like you gotta ooh, stay consistent. That's yeah. that, yeah. You can. I never want to go back from. You know what I'm saying? Even Kendrick Lamar, you'll notice it may take him two or three two or three years. Yes. To drop another album, but you know, no matter what it is, it's gonna, gonna be, be solid. Fun. Yeah. It's gonna be solid, and that's nice. that's where you gotta work your way into. But you're not. If you're brand new, you don't have that kind of leisure and that time to exactly. be waiting two or three years. I be telling all my other homies, bro. You got to go out and drop that. You mm-hmm. got to, you know what I mean? Put it out there so your fan base can see your growth. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So if you're showing people your growth, they'll see that, you know, they're along with you on the journey. So. Yeah, because there's some shit that I have, but I've, I've felt myself to be too much of a perfectionist. And with me, I like to be consistent with whatever it is I do. If I'm putting out this podcast, if I'm putting out clothes, if I'm just putting out like these videos, I find myself... If I don't even get the ball rolling, I won't start at all. Yeah, man. Um, and for me, it got to the point where it's like, okay, you're going to hold on to it forever. But, like, the wave and whatever's hot, by the time you may end up wanting to drop that, may not, not be what's hot anymore. no more. You know exactly. what I'm saying? That or you're going to perfect it so much that by the time it's ready to come out, like, for me, when my album be ready to come out, like, mm-hmm. yeah, I'll be, I be bumping my music, but it's like, all right, I'm already... T- I, that I'm, song's I'm two it. years old. Yeah, you know what I mean? I'm over it. So... Yeah, that's how I feel about that. So just keep working and keep grinding, man. And, like, a lot of these people, let's say you do feel like you're dope, right? But nobody's, like, inviting you to shows or making you pay to play. What are some ways that they could start building their own kind of fan base? Because I know that you're very involved in making people involved in your shows. Because I've seen you have a couple Facebook posts of, like, Yo, you can't just be out here being mad that you're not being invited to shows. Right. When you haven't put in the work, are you going to other people's shows? Facts. Are you listening to people's music? Are you sharing their music? Facts. Because a lot of people are just like, oh, well, they should like my music. We're friends. But it's not like that. Right. So for me, I feel like even with as far as like listening and sharing, you don't even necessarily really have to do that. You Mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? But... Don't spam somebody inbox and without like for me, I'm more susceptible to listen to something if you actually reach out and have a personal conversation with me. Like, hey, bro, yeah, would you would you check this out? Like on a real tip, like you know, I, I, I value your music opinion and I really like I'm trying to figure something out. Can you help me? Shit, I'm right? about to listen to it right now. Like that, yeah. I'm more like I'm more willing to do that and give you a listen that way compared to. I just dropped this. No, I just dropped this new song. All my dogs, let's get it. You know, <laughs> <laughs> all my, all my, all my boys is on this joint right here. F chickens get money, right? <laughs> I'm more likely to listen to it if you hit me up like, "Yo, Kenny, bro, what's up?" Mm-hmm. Even me, even if it's a mass message, I at least attempt to personalize the message. Exactly. At right? least do that. At least and follow up because when people read that, they're gonna be like, Psh, "What? Oh, this is a spam message." But yeah. if you, I, I be doubling back like, "Yo, what's up?" Right? Mm-hmm. And then they're like, "Oh, okay, you actually meant to send that to me." Yeah. Also, um, actually going to shows, man, because like, like at first, like I was doing the pay to plays, mm-hmm. I was doing the janky promoter shows, mm-hmm. I was doing whatever, but I have videos of me back in 2015 going out on the street and ran, rapping verses to random people. Yeah, it's just I, crazy. I rapped the same verse to 30 people, but people was like, yo, hey, okay, I rock with this, right? Mm-hmm. Um, also, yeah, that's the biggest way is shows, man, because you know, people got this ego about them to where they they feel entitled to something. When it's like, Facts. bro, you're not entitled to nothing. Like, think of it, think of it this way, and this to anybody who's watching this, mm-hmm. right? It's like your home, right? This is your this mm-hmm. is your crib, mm-hmm. and you know, yo, dog, you ain't invite me to your house, bro. You know what I'm saying? You ain't invite me to your house to have dinner with y'all, and 
I don't like how you moving. And you, yeah. you're, like, <laughs> you're like, uh, first of all, I pay rent up in yeah. here. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. What this fuck? is this is mine. Yeah. Like you're not entitled to none of this over here, right? <laughs> none of my posters, none of my plants, none yeah. of my nothing. You know what I'm none saying? None of that. And people need to understand it's almost the same concept, right? It's like me, if I invite you to a show and you ask me, and the first question you ask me is there any opening slots? And I tell you no, and then you go, oh no, I'm busy that night. It almost it, it gives me the 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 oh. thinking of, oh, so if I if I had some for you, you then you'd, you'd be, be here. open. You know what I'm saying? And I remember that next time. I'm, I don't forget nothing. And a lot of people like they think that you know I I have a lot of people who like to come around me and try and use me for my energy. Mm -hmm. And I and I started peeping that a lot more. Mm -hmm. And like I try my hardest not to be Hollywood. Like if obviously if I know you, like like I said, you're like yo bro, you free? Hey, I got you. What mm -hmm. you need? Because nice. I rock with you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But if it's somebody I don't know like that and you, I feel like you, hey, Kenny, let's do a song together. Okay, yeah, that's cool. Send me something. And that's them telling me to send them yeah. something. I'm like, bro. You're the one. Yeah, you want to do a song with me. <laughs> what I look like sending you a song. Exactly. Do you have anything in mind? Do you, um, what beat can we hop yeah, on? Yeah, no. have that shit ready. No, bro. no. You have that ready and I'll hop on your song. Exactly. And then if I like how your energy is, then I'll bring you something. That's how I work. Facts. You know what I mean? But it's like, especially when you're starting out, it's very important, as he said, to go out to shows and meet other artists. Yeah. So even when you see people live, it can kind of, whenever I see people live, whether it's a big artist like Kendrick or if I'm going to a Kenny show that I'm about to do this this week, right? Yeah, the 9th. The 9th, Friday. You know? So when they're performing... I'm seeing how they could have wrote that before they recorded the song. So it gives me kind of like, ooh, I like the way they did that. Maybe I can write something like that in my song because I see how it can transpire in the live setting instead of just in the studio. Because like when you made All Day All Night, were you also thinking about how it could be in concert? Oh, yeah, yeah. When I was making All Day All Night, mind you, this is when I'm coming off of being like a boom bap lyrical rapper because... Yep. All of my my first few tapes, I was trying to prove to people that I could rap, yeah. right? Like tenth grade, that that track. Tenth grade, bro, that, that flows. Uh, Dope. Thank you, bro. That was on uh, that was on Barsky out the great, but Barsky out was the first album that I started to try and step out of the box. I tried to change my beats from boom bap, you mm -hmm. know, the, 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 yeah, to to you know stuff that slammed on yep. the speakers because I wanted it to be when I performed it, I wanted my shows to be more lit. Exactly. And uh, that was my first show. That was the first show that I had that actually the whole crowd was, you know what I'm saying? And I tried to get a lot of my homies on the same wavelength because, you know, I was like, bro, like, they hear, like, only 10% of the people are going to understand what you're saying. You I know swear. what I mean? It's only a certain percentage of people who actually are real hip-hop heads that really understand bars yep. and understand lyrics. Yep. You can rap circles. You can right. <laughs> yeah, rap circles around people and they may not even get I've anything you said. I've had that problem, bro. I'm like, yo, this line was dope, but nobody really gets it. Nobody so got it. So it's like, I shouldn't, like, I, sh I should still try, but not make it too difficult. Well, I feel like in a show setting, at least, you oh, know, yeah. especially if it's not your specific show, mm -hmm. in a show setting, you definitely want to try and rock the crowd because... Fast. You want them First people impression. to remember. Yeah, you yep. want them to remember, yo, that dude had me lit. Yeah, like, You exactly. know what I'm saying? Hey, I used to be like, yo, I want everybody to respect me as the art, the <laughs> rapper. I want you to respect these bars, dog. Yeah. And, like, I used to hear people like, yo, he's a lyricist. He's this. Yeah. But I realized, bro, that's not what's selling. And I'm not saying that, you know, if that's what you do, if that's how you want to move, and that's you what you love, that. fulfill doing that. That's not, you know, but... At the same time and token, if what you want to do is get on and actually be out here, be pop, and you actually want to sell records, yep. there's still that that pocket of people who, there's that, still that pocket of people who are real hip hop listeners, mm -hmm. but the masses, right, mm -hmm. are going to want a, something that they could turn up to. I wanted to, all day, all night, I wanted something that, yo, hey, I'm throwing this on the playlist before we go out, but we got a party on tonight. Exactly. Hey, I, hey when we in the club, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Because literally, if you if you really think about it, you don't hear like Conway the Machine or or <laughs> super lyrical Eminem being played in the club. You exactly. Know? They're playing their mainstream stuff. Mm -hmm. So I tried to find a way to tweak it to where mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's hot, but at the same time, I'm still saying something. Like just what you were saying the other day, I think it was a post. It's like, I'm, I'm good on like the lyrical bars, which is good, but I'm really focused on writing songs. Exactly. 
because writing songs is what's going to get you to like um, places that you are going to have your music heard. Exactly. Because it's like, yo, I can rap fucking circles of double entendres, triple entendres. Exactly. But it's like, it's cool, but like, am I going to play that for my mom who doesn't even fucking speak English? Yeah. <laughs> am, am I, am I going to play that for my homies who really only listen to Lil Uzi Vert and I want them to bump to my shit? Exactly. They're like, there's literally like rappers that are all about the performing, the live aspect. They're like, ooh, they're about the hype shit. Right. And people want that. It doesn't have to be super lyrical, but you need to have a balance. You can't just have that all. Absolutely. So it's like, I'm glad that you can maneuver and like, okay, this song is for this. Yeah. I need man. a song for the ladies. All right, cool. All right, we're just chilling, me and my girl. This is a song for her. And this is exactly the, the comparison I'll make, right? Tupac and Biggie, right? Yeah. Everybody knows that Biggie is rapping circles around Tupac. Easy. And it's And it's not even a debate, right? But the thing that made Tupac much more successful than Biggie was, mm -hmm. was the fact that Tupac was a phenomenal songwriter. Facts. He knew where to place the perfect hook. He knew where to put the perfect bridge. He mm -hmm. knew to have old girl singing on the hook. You oh know, Big, I'm not saying Big didn't have nothing like that going on, but on his, the le there was levels to it. Yep. Which which is why Big or Tupac continued to sell and sold more albums while he was alive than than Big was. Yep. And uh, you know, for that me, is, that uh, is a good that's a good uh, analysis. Uh, you bro. feel me? Uh, and like, also another thing, it's like, uh, you know, me, I, I realize that you know my number in the rap game is going to eventually come. You know, there's going to come a, a, a age where I'll put a cap on it. Mm -hmm. But. Uh, but this shit gonna you still know, live forever, bro. But yeah, absolutely. But the songwriting aspect can never die, man. You know what I'm sure. saying? Because you can literally spit all the bars you want mm -hmm. as you. Yeah. Right? But if you're writing records for a Cardi B, oh, or, yeah. or, oh, or, yeah. or, or a or a Megan the Stallion, mm -hmm. or a or a Kanye or a Drake, you know what I'm saying? Thanks. We're gonna bring Kenny over. We seen a couple of songs. We want him to be in the sessions you where they can me? all brainstorm because Bruno has his song. He's his idea, but he doesn't have the words. Exactly. And, like, people, like, for the longest time, I kind of bashed Drake for uh, having ghostwriters, right, but per like, se. But, like, I think I was watching this interview with Saha the Prince. Saha, one, one of my favorite, Yeah, one of my favorites. Bro, he was literally like, you know, Kanye West, Drake, and all these guys, they're, they're beyond rap, yes. right? They're beyond that level of rap. And when he said it, it made sense because it was yeah. like you got Drake and Kanye West who are competing with Adele and Beyonce. Oh, and, that is so And true. they got like 40 and 50 writers. You <laughs> yeah. know what I'm saying? You writing your little bars <laughs> is not going to beat Adele and Taylor Swift. <laughs> that ain't going to beat them. You know what I'm saying? I swear. So I understood it. I was like, oh, okay. Mm -hmm. I'm done acting ignorant because yes. it makes sense. Like Taylor Swift has 50 writers who yeah. are all telling her the perfect melodies and bridges exactly. to sing. Exactly. And you know, with Drake, like you know, he he rap wise, okay. When you first come in, it definitely needs to be you. Yes. But by the time you surpass by your second and third Grammy, it yeah. don't matter no yeah, more. Yeah, they're gonna curate your sound, make <laughs> it even sound better. But that's that's so it's so true though, because like even one of my favorite artists that I listen to all the time, Ed Sheeran, he has like this Apple Music movie called Songwriter. Yeah. He he literally slowly made the song of uh, Justin Bieber. Uh, what is it? I'm sorry. Wait, I think it is. Oh, really? No, love yourself. Oh, yeah. If you oh, like, I literally thought. Go and love I literally yourself. thought Justin Bieber made that song about Selena, but it was fucking Ed Sheeran who made this song. He literally wrote all the lyrics, gave that shit to Justin. Exactly. I was like, wait, what the fuck? Exactly, and you're getting the same, not the you ain't getting the recognition, but you getting money still. <laughs> Ageless talent. Stupid. It's an ageless talent. You it know, is. songwriting is an ageless talent. Like people don't realize that the dream has written several records for, for artists, Beyonce, especially Beyonce. Yeah. Uh, uh, who else? Bryson Tiller. You know, he came out with Trap Soul. Yeah. I can't listen to that album no more, man. It gets me in my feelings. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I, I went through a bad breakup with. <laughs> you hey, connect to that? Yeah, huh? I can't play that no more. But, <laughs> but that album was phenomenal, top I to swear. bottom. And then, you know, you didn't hear from him ever again like yep. that until recently, but he was writing for Chris Brown, and he was writing oh, for, shit. you know, Neo was writing for Mary J. Blige and mm -hmm. all these people. So it's like, even before you it? heard of Neo, yeah. he was getting a bag already. Yes. Because it's, like you said, when you start out, it should be you. Yeah. So we can see that you're established, you know how to write your own own shit, but when you're writing these pop records that are going on the radio... Yes. 
You're going to need writers. You're going to need writers because it's you versus 50 people. That ain't going. I swear to God. It ain't going. Here's another aspect that I want to talk about in music. You told me about this play, the placements on, especially the streaming, because that's very important. It, there, it's one thing to be like, oh, my song, I'm going to put it out organically, and that can do well, which is fine. But a lot of these people, you're you're battling against people who have labels that have these streams that they put their um, their top their top uh, artists the, on here, yeah, absolutely. and they're getting plays. Yeah. So I don't think as people in our position, we shouldn't feel bad about being put on playlists. Yeah, yeah, no. Um, so for me, the way so at first, you know, obviously when you you're just now getting into the game of understanding the placements and things like that, like mm. number one placements. Getting placements is not buying views. Mm. It's you're you're doing what every label is doing. You're doing what anyone else Facts. is doing. You're Insane. getting yourself, you're getting yourself places to be seen, right? Yes. You're using someone else's platform mm -hmm. to get traction, right? Exactly. It, and even if you're you're getting placed on a playlist, it has to still be hot. It don't yes. mean just because it's on the playlist. You can easily that, skip your shit. Easily, if it's weak, they're gonna pass it, yes. right? But those labels <clears throat> usually have them first top 10 yep. spots locked up. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> like, uh, I remember I reached out to one dude. He's like, oh, no, nah, Blueface got that. Oh, I'm like, shit. what? <laughs> he's like, yeah the, <laughs> yeah, the label usually, yeah, they break me off, so I can't move it from there. Oh, and I'm shit. like, all right, well, throw me at, you know what I mean, whatever. But yeah, all right. <laughs> get placements. Yeah, I'm like, bro, what? <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah. Because it's like me and Kenny make a playlist, right? It's hot. We got... All the Lincoln artists on here. It's no different from a label doing that shit. All right, oh, such and such artist wants to get on here, gotta pay us. So, because we have ten thousand listeners, right? And that's worth value. So you gotta give us some value right. to be put on this list, so people can hear your shit. But we have to hear it first to be order to be put on this playlist, because we don't want to put no whack shit on here. Yeah, absolutely. So. A lot of dudes will do a lot of that. It's like a lot of greediness sometimes, mm -hmm. but then there's there's guys who will be stand-up guys and be like, all right, I actually rock with this, so I'm going to slide you up. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So, Damn. you know, it's all in how you play chess, man. All right, let's talk about what made you want to go. Let's pivot to uh, your military career. What right. made you want to go into the force, and you can be real about it. All right, so. The, I said the force? Nigga, What? I said the force. The this service. ain't Star Wars, the nigga. Service. <laughs> the the fucking service. military, bro. Um, we were struggling, man. That's essentially what it was. Mm -hmm. I was um like 22. I was I'm working at. Oh, you uh, were 22 when you. Okay. Yeah, I was 22 when I went in. I was working at like Ace Hardware. I was. Oh working. shit. The the dude had tried to like recruit me for a minute, dude. I was at, <laughs> I was I was running from. I was ducking him. <laughs> I was ducking him, but like, dude, I was working at Ace Hardware, and I was like, we had this apartment over on like. Across from Tico's or whatever. Yeah, we were we were standing over there. It was it was on right. N Street, or is it L? M? L. Oh, okay. Yeah, it yeah. was on L, but like, I was just like, you know, I got tired of like them taking my son's uh, like insurance and stuff like that. So I was oh, like, yo, gosh. I'm about to go get him some benefits, and yeah. I'm trying to lay some foundation for me later. Mm -hmm. Which you know, fast forward, you know, I met people from all over the world. Yeah. You know, I, I I you know got my son the the healthcare he needed, and mm -hmm. I was able to provide things, but. The one thing I couldn't provide was my time, yep. you know, because I was always gone. Mm -hmm. And um, so in return for that, I ended up, uh, I ended up, you know, getting out and, you know, it was, it was a good thing I, I got done and now I'm home. What are the, what are some of the things that most people have misconceptions of being in the military? So you're talking about people in or people who... The people who are outside looking at the military. So for some reason, people thought that I knew something about aliens, which is not true. <laughs> like, it is not true. Like, I'm like, bro, I don't know nothing about no damn aliens. He's like, yo, they so... they telling everybody? Yo, yo, bro, so you're in the army, so you know about aliens. I'm like, bro, I don't know shit about no aliens. <laughs> we don't know nothing about no aliens. Man, did, um, did you get a... Go, go ahead, sorry. No, no, no. What were we about to say? Did you go overseas? Yeah, I did. Where were you deployed? So I rotated. They didn't call it a deployment, which is whack, because I was in very much danger. I was in grave danger, as a matter of fact. Whoa. My life expectancy was three minutes. What? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We were in South Korea at the... We were at the furthest north in South Korea. We were about 12 miles from the DMZ. And literally, like, 
we were the furthest north element. So we would have went to war, and this is when Trump was getting ready to go into office, oh, and they were shit. they were shooting the missiles. Everybody's on Facebook panicking, and oh yeah, and I people that weren't shit. finding stuff out till like a week or two later. So we were over there actually dealing with it, like, oh, and they're over shit. there like because. Scared. North Korea would use that as like a intimidation tactic mm-hmm. and things like that. So, uh, yeah, I was over there and and uh, we were at, like find North Korean propaganda oh, in our shit. in our motor pool and you know some of the cab drivers. You know, I'm from America, bro. I can't tell, and this isn't to sound some type of way. I can't tell oh. the difference between the South Korean and the North Korean. Bro. To me, they all look the same. But Sorry. a South Korean will tell you a North Korean because mm-hmm. they're like, "Yo, bro, his hair cuts a certain way, and oh, his shit. his language is different from mine." That makes sense. Yeah, you know. So, uh, yeah, they said if if they would have started shooting off the missiles, bro, we had three minutes and we'd have been out of there. Oh shit! Yeah. Bro, that's fucking scary, bro. Yeah, I I, I didn't know that till I got back. <laughs> I didn't know that till I got back here. So there was that, and then I went over to Europe. I went to Poland for a few months before I got that home. That was more chill, huh? It was a little bit more chill, but we were the furthest east to Russia. Mm-hmm. So if we would have got into a Russia, that was our ass. Uh, but <laughs> <laughs> hey, that was our ass. Because, Russia's scary, bro. Well, Russia is just as well equipped as uh, well it's, equipped it's, as we are. Yeah. But the thing is, before we could actually get our real stuff over there, mm-hmm. that we would already been smoked. Oh, you know what shit. I mean? That's that's like, all right, we'll take this fucking L. Nigga. Yeah, we'll take this L and we'll wait for reinforcements. You know what I'm saying? That yeah. we can even hold up. Bro, I know we got fucking power here, bro. Oh yeah. That's what's like. If niggas really want to pop off, they don't want. USA nah, to pop nah, off. Nah. You so don't they're trying that. to like fuck with our politics. They're trying to make us even fight and bicker. Cause I know I know Russia and China are invested on making us more divided. Well see, China is more and this is my own personal opinion, I mm-hmm. guess. I can't really speak. This is not the military. I was speaking. just gonna say this is not the army. Yeah, speaking. this is not this, China is more, you know, yo, don't fuck with us. Uh, we, we won't fuck with y'all. Yeah. Russia is more like, yo. We y'all want smoke, we want smoke too. Oh, type, shit. Okay. you know what I mean. North Korea is like, yo, don't fuck with us. We got nukes, but we can't fly them over there because our technology ain't there yet. Who North Korea? Yeah, oh, yeah. North Korea. They got the biggest army, one of the biggest armies in the world. That was the first but thing they told fu- us oh, when we landed on the thing. They're like, yo, because like this is something my, my drill sergeant told me. He's like, Buford. I'm like, what's up? He's like, are you ready to die for the United States right now? And I literally sat there, and I'm like, uh, he said, is anybody in this room right now ready to go and fight and die for the United States of America? And we all just sat there and didn't say shit. He was like, that is the difference between y'all and the people of North, North Korea. Korea. Yeah, so he's like, that's the difference between you guys and the people of North Korea. The people of North Korea love their country. Damn. They, he was like, the people of North Korea, they know nothing else, so they will fight and die, and they have no choice to fight and die because yeah, it's a dictatorship. Got, yeah, I was going to say, they got no fucking choice. Yeah, he was like, yo, there's four million soldiers that are willing to go. You guys are half of 1% that have signed up to do this, oh and y'all ain't even God, telling us that y'all are really ready and willing to fight and die. <laughs> Real talk. That was really what it was, because I'm like, do I really want to <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm like, do I really want to die for them? No, like, y'all got me up here bald headed. Y'all yelling at me. I'm ashy. I was like, y'all won't give me the phone to call my people. That's <laughs> like, crazy. Like, what is their um, policy with phones? So, I mean, when you're actually in, like, you're good. You have your phone the yeah. same way. But, like, when you're in basic training and stuff like that, you can't that's have your gone, phone. Though. Yeah, that's gone, bro. Is that I was, six weeks? Man, what? It's more like three months. Like, they tell you, like, six to nine weeks. But they don't tell you about the two weeks of in processing that it takes when you get down in there. In processing. Yeah, you get down there and you're like, it's like you're, uh, how can I explain it? All right, plantations, right? I yeah. just that's the only way I can think of it. You know, they shipped all the slaves over into and one. Now they just waiting. Mass area, right? All right, we gonna get all your paperwork, your finance, your you're gonna set up your life insurance policy, you're gonna set up all of this, right? While you're doing this, we're about to march you. We're going to keep you up for two days so we can break all your sleeping habits. You gonna, We're going to shave your head bald, and you got to pay for this haircut. We buy, You got to buy these shoes, and you better shut the fuck up. Oh, my God. <laughs> Yo, I'm telling you, hey, my basic, hey, that I was ashy. I was sick. I was sad, man. When you first got there, were you like, nigga, what did I do? Dog, you want to hear my basic training story? Yes. All right, I'm going to tell you my basic training story. So... 
It's after two weeks. You're like, bro, I'm just ready to get this started, Can man. Get and, some nerds, bro. Yeah, well, go ahead. And this is like, and this I'm trying to keep you on the time frame of when this is all going down. This yes. is after J. Cole dropped 2014, Four Seals Drive. Drive. Oh, shit. So, and the song that's on the radio is uh, apparently, I keep my yeah. head high. <laughs> so, like, literally, you know, on the, on the bus is the only time you listen to music. Mm -hmm. So think about it. I can't hear music. I haven't heard music in like two weeks already. You haven't heard music? Oh, yeah. I was losing my mind. I had already heard the album because it was out before I left. Okay. I left January 13, 2015. Uh, but, oh, and also, uh, no type. I don't got no type. Yeah. That's how, I put, that's how I put a bookmark on time. Like, I, I listen to music and I remember songs. And that'll remind me when, when I was going through whatever it was I was going mm -hmm. through. So, like... Uh, Bro, I'm telling you, we, um, all right, so we go through the end processing, which is whack, whatever. And mind you, I was in ROTC as well in high school. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, we're, um, so you sit out, you lay all your uh, your duffel bags out. Yeah. We had two duffel bags and you had a, a a laundry bag. And they told you, don't over don't overstuff your stuff because it's about to be a wrap. Me and a few of the other dudes were kind of high speed. We rolled up our uniforms into like bundles mm -hmm. so that because when you get there, they're going to dump all your shit. Oh, so, shit. So they, they're like, all right, you're in, you're in third platoon. You're riding with them. Bam, go get in that bus. We all got in the bus. They're like, we yep. want you to strap one, uh, uh, one duffel bag right here, one duffel bag in your back, and hold your laundry bag in your hand. Mind you, I'm still a little. I'm still a little. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I was skinny, and I wasn't, you know what I'm saying? I'm carrying the stuff. I'm struggling. <laughs> <laughs> I'm struggling And dog What ended up happening was uh, I get on the bus And then you know We pull up And this apparently Is playing on the radio And it's sunny And it's it's a sunny day in Georgia I'm like man You know Maybe everything Isn't gonna be so bad Yes Maybe, maybe it's gonna be all good And then finally The bus stops Oh shit The door opens Everybody get your mother Get your ass <laughs> off the bus Get the fuck off the Hurry the fuck up Hurry up Hey Get your mother Hurry Bro me Everybody pew, Everybody's gone off yeah. the bus Me I'm in the middle So I'm like trying to Hurry up man. I'm getting my stuff I'm like trying to grab my bags Dog My bad I'm trying to grab my bags mm -hmm. I'm struggling to the front of the bus. <laughs> dog, I fell off the bus. <laughs> like oh, from the, shit. you know how the bus got yeah, two, two stairs? Seconds, Bro, I fell <laughs> off the I fell off the stairs. Get up. Hey, yeah. And like I fall and then I'm like, get your motherfucker out of the So this is me and this is him. He's leaning over me yeah. while I'm on the ground and like damn near push up and just, get your motherfucker out of the Every time you, you walking slow as fuck. <laughs> and like, I'm just, and I'm blocking out what he's saying. And in my mind, I'm like, this is where you just fucked yeah. up. <laughs> this is where you just fucked up. <laughs> Nobody can save you. You got no phone. You're in the middle of nowhere. And you, you got these, take. these mugs yelling at you. Yeah. And he just said, get your motherfucker out of the sun. Bro, I get up and I start struggling again. I mm -hmm. fall down again. And oh, he's in my, no. everybody running by me. And then they put us, they take you somewhere called a CTA. It's like a common training area. Mm -hmm. So, like, that's where they, like, this is where they see who's bitch made, right? Oh, so everybody shit. lines up and they're just walking around. This, called, this is before they shark attack you. So, like, you're in different, you're in flanks mm -hmm. or you're in ranks, mm -hmm. bam, bam, bam. And, like, they're walking around. And, like, you're supposed to keep your head and eyes straight. Yeah. Don't look at nothing. No Stay yeah. right there. Bro, I'm literally, I knew what it was. Yeah. And, like, out of nowhere, there's one dude who looks over. <laughs> he looks over. They swarmed his ass. Oh. What the fuck you looking at? <laughs> oh, so I'm pretty? <laughs> oh, I'm pretty, huh? Oh, I'm motherfucking pretty. Everybody, get your ass down. Everybody. Uh, bro, everybody, bro, yeah, they started making us push. Bam, oh. bam, bam. So they're counting it in cadence. So in cadence is one, two, three, one. One, two, three, two. So right, one, two, three. When you hear their voice do that, that yeah. means it's about time to get up. Or you're supposed to stop. One, two, three, halt. So you stop. Mm -hmm. One dude kept, you got to wait for the command to get up. Yeah. I ain't saying it. <laughs> yeah. I ain't saying it. Get the fuck up. What your ass doing? Da -da -da -da. Everybody. Front leaning rest position. Move. And everybody went back down. I'm just like, damn. That's One, two. Th and the dude did it again. It ha he happened like to do it like two or three times. And yeah, that's how that's one dude peed on himself. Two oh. dudes peed on themselves. Oh it was, yeah, God. that was, it, yeah. They couldn't go to the bathroom or what? They were scared. <laughs> Holy shit. 
Yeah, your ass, bitch, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I've never been in that position. I'm sorry if, if I called you that. No, no, you peed on yourself, bro. It's it's high. <laughs> but I feel like you could literally just stand straight up. If a nigga's yelling at me, cool. All right. Mm, I know he was supposed to do that. Yeah, yeah, it was definitely. Do you guys have any swimming tests? That should be hard. No, as a matter of fact, even the Navy doesn't even have a damn swimming test. I might do that. Now. Which does not make sense. These niggas fuck with the water. Bro, you're in the Navy. Why do you not know how to swim? <laughs> yeah. I don't I never understood that. Why so, don't Do you think the military not mostly physical, it's more mental? It's both. It's both cuz if you don't stay in shape, they can kick you out for that. You so got to be in what, shape. What height? I mean, what weight did you have to be at? So it depends on how old you are mm-hmm. and it depends on yeah, how tall, well, how old you were and I guess your your height. You're 175? You were, so you, have to you had to be at I'm trying to think. I was I was always good obviously yeah. cuz I came in there like a little I was skinny but I was fat too because I wasn't in shape. I was yeah. smoking weed and mm-hmm. eating pizza all day long. But mm-hmm. like boy, when I came up out of there though, hey, so, I came out like Hercules, dog. I'm talking like every hey, GI Joe, bro. Yeah. I was stacked. Hell yeah. But like, you know, um we that like most of the big dudes who went up in there got in shape. Hell yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you go to there, bro, you coming back right. That's what's you up. You coming back right, but yeah. But damn, three months, bro? Yeah, it's about three months in my class. It, it varies? No, it ain't no, it, it ain't no, it varies. If you mess up, like say, if you get recycled, oh, shit. if you get caught doing something you ain't, you ain't got no business doing, if you don't qualify uh, with your rifle... Uh, they recycle you if you like Damn, fall that out. So bad, oh, boy, man. We, we had a 16k. We had a 10k. Mind you, and mind you, you go through all those things. White face was the, they treat you like you absolutely are trash. Like they don't know Damn. your name, your number. Like oh yeah, all that. You got to start back all the way over. There's one dude I think he got caught like he snuck his phone or something the whole time he was in basic. And then they caught they caught him like the day before graduation and recycled him from the jump. Oh. And you signed a contract, so it's not like oh I, hell no, I'm going home. It's like no, nah, you about to recycle. Oh shit! And you about to do this shit again. Oh shit! Yeah, nigga, that shit would hurt my feelings. Oh bro. man, what? The day before. Day before graduation, I bet you wish recycle. You didn't do no dumbass shit. Man, bro. what? Okay, what were okay? Are there any habits that you have kept from being in the military? Well, like you saw, I, I made it a big deal because I was like 12, oh, you know what oh, I'm saying? Yeah. I was late. I was late. That, that makes, okay, that makes sense. And I was like, ain't no. And then when you, when you came back from basic, did you eat slower? No, you eat fast, bro. Yeah. You eat fast. Like, you eat, you learn to eat fast because like, uh, so like, for instance, right? <clears throat> Say there's a row right here of nothing but seats. Like it's a lunchroom. There's rows of seats over there. Mm-hmm. Bro, when we're eating, like they have tables but like if the other group of people come and sit right there your ass is done you got to get up and move they have a bunch of tables but like if, if they start to fill up all those things yeah and then and some, come this row ro- gets here you got to get the fuck up so like bro we start thriving off of peanut butter and jelly you start thriving off of uh you know what i'm saying trying to eat the eat the you wanted to get your nutrition but yeah. you know what i'm saying it made you hurry up and you know what i'm saying you only ate three times a day uh because it was like they're trying to get your no eating. No snacks? Yeah, eat, no snacks, nigga. If you got caught with snacks, bro, that was some shit that would get you recycled. Like, oh, my God. Yeah, yeah. It was, it was not It was not nothing to mess with, bro. bro I'm me, almost thinking that one of my siblings should go to fucking... Yo, me and my mouth, dog. <laughs> <laughs> yo, me and my mouth. You thought, hey, you thought I was Tupac on KD, nigga. You, hey, <laughs> up there, hey, it got to the point where like, yo, shut the fuck up, Buford. Because I was literally like, I was, I was that nigga with the mouth. Yeah. Oh my gosh, bro. Let's pivot this. God. How old is Amari now? He's seven. Seven. Pride and joy. So he was the reason why you went to the military to provide some yeah. sustenance, some insurance. Yeah, man. And finance. Man, that's what's up. So were you with the, uh, his mom at the time? I was with his mom, but me and her had split up. I was like young. We we were together when we were younger. High school? Or just out of high school? Out, out, like, fresh out of high school, kind of. Like, mm-hmm. I was, like, not 8, 19, something like that. We were real young. And, you know, I didn't really get to be a young man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I was trying to be grown too soon. And then, you know, it, it kind of, you know what I'm saying, by the end of our situation, <clears throat> I was kind of like, yo, I, I'm grown now. I got money. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm trying to see what these hoes about. You know oh, what I'm saying? Yeah. That was what it was on. 
Um, and we we were we had also split up, like you know what I'm saying before I took off. So okay. that's so kind of how that. You ended. didn't have to worry about that. Yeah. So I see you with him a lot on the snap. Y'all y'all make sure to follow fucking Kenny on snap. He's yeah. always got something. But you, excuse, you make him get up some shots because he plays basketball. Does he? Did he? Did he also do football? Flag? No, he didn't play football. Did well, I had signed him up, man, but then they shut down everything. <clears throat> and so um, I kept him in basketball because I didn't know what was going to happen. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, man, with basketball, I'd be trying to get him to get at least 500 up. Whew. Yeah, so he he work out like a grown man, dog, and I'm, like, very strict on him with his form. Yep. And, bro, his jumper looks way cleaner than mine's ever did as a kid. So did your dad ever do that with you? No, not so, at all. Not at all. So... You're you're becoming a better father trying in that to. aspect. Trying to. Well, it's always an ongoing battle. Yeah, man. Because, like, at first you said you didn't have the time with him. Yeah. Were you also fighting custody at the time, or were you guys just cool at the time? I mean, we were not cool. Uh, like, Oh, yeah. I, like, a lot of the reason, I guess, like... Um, I also got out was because you know a lot of a lot of spiteful things started happening yep. because of me leaving and me going and to where like some of the stuff that I went for wasn't being used and and things like that oh, and, and okay. that put like a rift into things and you know what I'm saying that makes sense yeah so what were the lessons you learned when he was born being a parent um other than patience uh, sh- have your money right you know what i'm saying yep. you know but i you know no one is really i guess prepared the bet, the most you can do is like set yourself up for success yeah so like you know i was young <clears throat> i was young man but i had to i had to figure out soon you know what i'm saying which mm-hmm. is why i told you i ended up going back to lincoln high yeah that makes which sense. is why i was like because it was like yo i gotta set this example for him exactly and if i can't it's like you know you i can't tell you to do something i ain't do myself oh, yeah. you know what i mean so, so true so that was essentially what happened there. I went back and uh, just so I could, he was actually at my graduation, man. That's he he up, was there, man. you know. He was in the little, the little, little thing. Text. I held him, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but like I, I, I worked for that, and and um, you know, I, I getting my diploma was something that I, I really wanted to do because it was, you know, and not a knock to anybody with a GED, but I had did so much of the school anyway. That you should have just done that. Might as well, you know what I'm saying? Might as well. I had to go back to regular high school or whatever, but I was like, yo, like, I need to do this to set the example for my son. Exactly. What were, what was like some of the items that you didn't think were expensive before you had a child? And then you were like, whoa, what the fuck? What's expensive? Especially when a child is in the infant toddler age. Um, I mean, well, okay, so formula because oh, she didn't he, you know, she didn't nurse him. No, um, you wish probably, yeah, that probably would have saved a couple of dollars. Formula, uh, diapers, you didn't have a diaper keg, bro. Yeah, no, <laughs> hell no, hell no, man. This is, I didn't know what the hell that was, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Now I'm like, if I ever have a kid, nigga, we having a couple diaper kids. Yeah, cases. yeah, uh, so really just like formula primarily and mm-hmm. um, and then rent, because around that time, man, we were, a lot of stuff was happening, like my crib was getting shot up, a whole bunch of other wild oh, stuff. Whoa, whoa, what? Yeah, bro. <laughs> In the O? No, here. For what? Yo, you don't remember about that shooting that happened on, like, the 4th of July of, like, 2012? Uh Uh-uh. That was my crib. I'll I'll send you the article, but, like, basically my neighbor, he killed this dude in our front yard who ended up being, like, a real, real, a real connected dude. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the the people who... Were connected to him? Were connected to him wanted my neighbor's head, dog. Like, they wanted him. But the thing was, the news, man, the news, and this is why I have a big problem with Lincoln Journal Star, 1011, all those cats, because... They added fuel to the fire because they didn't specify the address, right? Oh. We stayed in a duplex. Yeah. Dude stayed in uh, unit number one. We stayed in unit number two. Mm-hmm. They did not specify the address, oh. 923 North 30th Street. So they essentially, these people thought that we were a family. Oh, shit. And so they came back to our crib like three and four times and, and shot the shit up. Three and four times. Damn. Yeah. That's scary. Absolutely. Wait, bro, I've never asked you this question. Do you have any siblings? I have, I have a couple of siblings. I have a little sister, that would have been who lived with me and my mom. Mm-hmm. And then on my dad's side, I got 
three sisters and a brother. They live they live in the south and, and in the So mm-hmm. my my uh, sister my two little sisters, uh Kennedy and Cameron, they stay in Atlanta. That's where my dad stay right now. Uh, do I I see something connecting. Yeah. K's, huh? Yeah, they stay in Atlanta and then my brother, he stays in v- VA. Okay. He's from Brooklyn and my sister Chanel, she stays in Brooklyn. Hell yeah. So a while ago, I seen you traveled somewhere, and you were wearing, like, a white shirt. I'm trying to remember. Yeah, that was us in Georgia. In Georgia. That's what it was. How fun was that? That was we lit. That was the first time all of us got together, ever. Oh, the shit. The first time all of my dad's kids got together. Did and Mario it was go? Mario went, bro. Yeah. It was a movie. It was a <laughs> movie, dog. Like, yo, we was lit. My dad got this huge-ass crib because he did 20 years in the military. Oh, shit. He was also a drill sergeant and all that. So he kind of, yo, he actually sent for me while I was in basic on some Neo from the Matrix type shit. What? Dog, I was at the STT range, and that's like the simulated training. Yeah. So it's like a laser gun, but you're you're practicing, like, your, your mechanics. Real-time aim, yeah. So, bro, I'm sitting there shooting out of nowhere. My drill sergeant taps me. Buford. Get up, come over here. I, I get up, I go over there. He and this this dude, he got a badge on. He's like, hey, what's up? My name is Craig Cooper. I'm your dad's homie. He sent me here. I was like, what? Yeah. I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, I'm like what? He's like, yeah. I've been tracking you since you've been out here. You were at 30th AG, and that's like the reset receiving. Mm-hmm. So like, I'm in there feeling like I'm Neo. Like, yeah. I, I was the chosen one. Like, I was like, hey, I'm like. <laughs> He's like. Yeah, he told me, yeah, go ahead and write him. Here's his address. You know what I'm saying? And woo, 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 he'll see, he'll be at your graduation. I'm like, Whoa, yo, the so drill good. sergeants were shook. They was like, yo, beautiful, we might have to check you. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, you might have, like, some contraband or a phone on you or something. I'm like, yeah, nigga. <laughs> yeah. Contraband is when somebody brings something? Contraband is if you get caught with, like, you get caught with snacks. You get caught with gum. You get, bro. We got messed up because one dude kept up two pieces of gum from his MRE and got caught chewing it. MRE. MRE. Oh, this is fucking Me- meal ready to eat. Oh shit! Peel it open. Has the heater in it, and you could cook your little meal. Yeah. He's all like, "What the hell are you chewing on?" He's like, "Uh, uh." <laughs> Cause like they turn up on ten real quick. What the fuck are you chewing on? Oh shit! Uh, uh spit it out. He spit it out his gum. He's like, "All right, all y'all, toe on the line." So they have a, something called the kill zone. So say the whole room, this is the kill zone, but the kill zone st- spans, say, across the whole crib. Mm-hmm. So it's, like, in the middle of the whole area, and you can, you're not allowed to walk in the kill zone. The kill zone's for the drill sergeants. Toe on the line. Mm-hmm. They make the dude who messed up, mm-hmm. and this happened to me, too, because, like I said, my mouth, yeah. right? They make the dude who messed up, you stand and watch, and everybody else gets fucked up. Oh, shit. Yeah, yeah. So my so fucked up. Yeah, shit. yeah, yeah. Everybody is pissed. Yo, I had gotten in trouble for some shit. Everybody, it was like first day. They thought I was gonna be a big problem because I just ran my mouth all the time. What would you do? Just talk back. All right. Hell yeah, nigga. What? Yeah. Nigga. All right. So look, let me tell you what happened. I'll tell you one story. One one story in particular. So if you're getting ready to go to sleep, you gotta get up. You gotta stand up because you know if you go to sleep, they gonna they gonna let you know. Oh shit. My ass sat here and I was getting tired. So I stood up. And this is when they're giving the EOD brief. They tell you about like how the people will set off bombs, roadside bombs with cell phones and who to watch for, what to what what can make a roadside bomb, X, Y, and Z. This oh, it shit. was a real interesting class, mm-hmm. but I was so tired. Mind you, when you get there, they make you stay up for two to three days. So that you all that staying up till midnight, mm-hmm. three in the morning, yeah. all that shit's dead. You 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 literally, if you sit in a comfortable position after doing that. You automatically hear with it. Oh. So so what ended up happening was uh, I'm getting tired, and I go and I stand up. After I stand up, I go back and I sit down. I'm like, all right, shit, I'm going back to sleep. Let me stand up. Drill sergeant, yo, what the fuck are you doing? I'm like, uh, <laughs> well, drill sergeant, no, I don't care. Like, I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. You uh, you just sat up, and you sat down. You sat back up. No, 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 uh. Now sit down. I'm like, but drill sergeant, I'm going. He's like, I don't care. Sit down. And I'm like, I look at this. I look at him as I'm standing up. Yeah. And I go to sit down, but I sit down mad slow, like yeah. disrespectfully slow. Like I go from here, I'm like this, and when I come down, mad slow. Oh hell no! Hey, 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 <laughs> hey! As a, like a thug though, like a thug, I did that on his ass, and I thought I won too. <laughs> Get your toe on the line. Yo, yo, no, it wasn't even my drill sergeant. Let me tell you how bad I messed up. 
So I'm sitting down. I'm a thug, right? I'm like, yeah, yeah, this is going to be easy. Yeah. Ho ass. Next, y'all ain't going to do nothing to me, right? Y'all ain't going to do nothing to me, right? <laughs> Yo, out of nowhere, my drill sergeant walks up. And like, mind you, they don't know your names at first. You're just a roster number. So if you belong to our platoon, you have blue tape on your camel back. Okay. Uh, the other platoons were like yellow, green, and red, but we were blue, and I was 344. I'll never forget it. So he just pulls up, looks at my tape. I don't know what he's looking at. I'm just, you know what I'm saying? He looks at my shit, and then he walks off. Like, more like, all right, and he walks oh, off. Shit. So I'm like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, you know, these bitch ass. They ain't going to do nothing to me. They ain't going to do nothing to a real one. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Bro, we outside. We marching around. Half left face. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Right face. Uh, you know, I'm killing it. Like, yeah. I'm like, ah, I'm feeling it. You know? <laughs> I'm feeling myself. Left face. Uh, right about face. I'm killing it, right? <laughs> I'm killing it, bro. Out of nowhere. Out of nowhere. Uh, so I'm, I'm killing it, and out of nowhere, uh, they stop. So they're like, Mark Tom, march. That's when you stop, and, you st- and you're marching in place. Mm-hmm. And they put two and halt. Left face. Hey, Hey, where 344 at? I'm thinking they about to show me some love. Like, hey, 344, (laughs) like, yo, where he at? All right. Yo, 344, come to the front. I come to the front. I'm like, yo, here I am, Josar. What's up? He's like, yo, everybody, your battle buddy 344 is a fucking (laughs) shitbag. Like, he's a shitbag. You want to disrespect NCOs? You want to do this? You want to do that? Hey, everybody, half right face. And when you heard half right face, you already knew that everybody getting it because that's when they're turning the the formation so that nobody's feet can touch nobody's. Oh, so shit. it's like, yo, they front leaning rest position, move. That's the push up position. Oh, shit. Everybody, one, two, three, mm-hmm. one, two, three. They went up to 50 in cadence, right? Then he said, everybody, on your backs. Hey, the flutter Sit kick. Up. The fuck, <laughs> six inches. Everybody, mind you, this is we're fresh out, we're fresh too basic. Nobody's in shape yet. Six inches. He got them to eighty, dog, in cadence. Yo, by the time they were done, I was mad because I had a point. Like I'm like, bro, y'all told me to stand up. Yeah. <laughs> like I'm trying to, like, hold on, dog, hold on. Don't go against the grain. Everybody gonna end up hating me. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Because I'm not doing it. They all doing it. And bro. Then he's like, now get the fuck back in formation 344. And like, I'm in that bitch hot, boy. Yeah. I'm, I'm pissed. My fist is bald. I'm marching. I'm not even like, I'm in there hot. Like, I just want to fire off on dude, right? And he's like, we want to know what makes the situation worse, though. He walks up to my ear like this. And he's like, you got an attitude problem, 344? Ooh. And I'm like, my, she's in my ear, just like how I am with this microphone. You got a, you got an attitude problem, 344? I'm like, no, Joe, sorry. He's like, that's right. You better not, because I'll fix that shit. And I'm oh, in my, I'm shit. in my, I'm like, oh, no, he did it. <laughs> I'm like, ah. Like, I wanted to fire off on him right here, like, ah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I, just, I just wanted him to feel me real quick, like. You in my ear talking that greasy shit. Like I was like, oh, I was hot. And and um Sorry, and, Whit. Yeah. And uh I had to hang up. But uh he was talking that greasy stuff. So then I'm like, all right, you know what I'm saying? He talking greasy. Man, hold on one second. All right. We'll be back for a Hello? second. Yeah, I'm in the middle of the thing. Yeah, it got greasy. So, yeah, like, I'm hot. I'm crazy in my ear, nigga. Hey, I'm hot. Like, uh, I'm hot. Like, I'm I'm just like, yo, I want to fire off on dude. Mm -hmm. And he's just like, he talked that grease stuff to my... So, we get back to the bay. We all got bunk beds in there. I'm in there walking around with my boys like, yo, I'm about to fire off. <laughs> like, I'm trying to be Some on that old that old shit. me. Like, I'm about to fire off on this. You know what I'm saying? They're like, dog, you might not want to do that. He going to beat your ass. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm like, no, he ain't. No, he ain't. But they're like, dog, he's like 6'3". You know what I'm saying? He's stacked. He's a tank. And he's infantry, bro. He's been deployed like five, six times, bro. He's going to beat shit. your ass. And I'm like. You right, yeah. <laughs> you right. Yeah. Oh, you right. He might beat my ass, but yeah, you, thank you, man. But he's still gonna feel me. <laughs> I still stole off on him. No, he gonna remember that, right? Yeah, I got off on the inf- infantry, man. Yo, yo. So, and then on top of that, if you ever were to like beat one of them up, they would jump you. 
Like, it's like and when people talk that, oh, I, they ain't going to talk to me like that because I'll do this, bro. You're in the middle of nowhere. It's 10 of them, one of you, you're getting jumped. And they're wearing combat boots. You're getting stomped out. Oh, shit. And and they all like are in tip top shape. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's not like you like if you even if you did steal off on one and knocked him out, there's nine more. Yeah. That's, like, <laughs> that's about to work you. Like they may take you out to like the wood line and you don't have no phone to call for no help. You don't know where you're Damn. at. None of your boys is about to help you because they Fuck scared. No, yeah. It's you, they can jump you, bro. That's so like scary. when people be like, Oh, I ain't he ain't never gonna do me like that, bro. They would definitely do you like <laughs> that, bro. <laughs> definitely do you like that. And then write a report on you and take your money and you just got beat up and your brain got to take your money for what? Like, so they use that as like a um like a punishment. Like you can get your your pay deducted. Oh, or you can get shit. dropped in rank. Because yeah. you get paid every month? You get paid twice a month. Oh hell yeah! So like the first and the fifteenth, but yeah. like if you mess up, and they go okay. We don't. We're gonna take half a month's pay. Bam, that's a check right there. Ow. Yeah, yeah. Nigga, you gonna take half my check? Half a month's pay. That's what they be doing to keep people in check. We gonna knock you down rank, Ooh. and we about to. You know what I'm saying? Oh, because rank you get a look. It's like a pay raise. Yes, basically. So what's the highest, sir? Not a sergeant. So the highest that you can make enlisted is sergeant major, and the highest you can make on the officer side is like a colonel. But you're not gonna, you gotta be in that like 30, 40 years, man, to make colonel. Like that's they not got happening. Hella hardware. That's the <clears throat> the colonel's like the full bird. Mm -hmm. But like, uh, no, my bad. I'm tripping. I'm tripping. A general. I'm sorry. A general is the highest you can be on the officer side. Uh, and that's where you get you can be a four star, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? There's not very many, there's not any five star generals at all, actually. But you'd have to be in damn near 40, 30, 40 years. That's damn so near like, you. That has to be a career. That, yeah, you damn near have to be a career. And you have to have a, a college degree and all that extra stuff. But, oh, shit. Uh, I yeah, didn't yeah. know that. I thought it was just like, nigga, just slowly no. went up. On, on the enlisted side, you got a uh, sergeant major and stuff. That's E9 and mm -hmm. stuff like that. But like, yeah, I've heard the E's. Yeah. So Okay. So when you start out, are you a private? You're a private. And and you're, well, what? first, when you first get there, you're not anything yeah. until you graduate. Once you graduate, then you're a fuzzy. But me, I came in with a little bit of rank because I did ROTC, so I got an E2. Mm -hmm. And then I, I made it up to, like, E4 promotable. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of, like, where I where I ended my uh, stint. Yeah. Okay. Oh, shit. Oh. Anyways. <laughs> Kenny, it seems like Kenny has to go. No, I don't got to go, man. But I'm kind of hungry, though. <laughs> <laughs> Tut's kind of hungry. So, Kenny, thank you for coming. All right, man. I would like to thank you all for listening. I hope you guys had fun. We had a lot of laughs, a lot of goofy shit. So we're in for a great ride. Oh, yeah. Make sure y'all follow us on Instagram. Kenny, what is yours? I'll also put it up here. Kenny underscore B-A-R-Z. One more time. Kenny underscore B A R Z. And then you can follow us at Blazing the Trail Podcast. At Blazing the Trail Podcast. All right. So if you know a person who would be great as a guest on this podcast, please reach out to one of us or my boy Jack on Instagram. But Jack's not here. It's okay. So thank you all for listening to Blazing the Trail Podcast. As always, it starts with you because you are the one. So make that shit happen. Thank you for coming, Kenny. Because patience is a virtue. Don't skip the lessons for you. This ain't no race. Stay your pace. Robots coming for you. Life can be 